A 26-year-old man has been charged with murder in connection with the beating death of his father. At around 3.55pm on Friday the 2nd of June, authorities responded to the 300 block of Vincent Avenue in Rockford, Illinois in reports of an unresponsive man. When officers arrived, they found a man face down in a pool of blood on the living room floor with several lacerations to his head and abrasions on both arms. A sewing machine was found next to his head, as well as a broken wooden walking stick and several broken pieces of glass nearby. Authorities said that 64-year-old Roger Pitts was found dead by a friend who had stopped by his home. An autopsy determined that Roger died from blunt force trauma to his head. During the investigation, detectives identified Roger's son, 26-year-old Devon Pitts, as a suspect. Police concluded Roger's death resulted from exceptionally brutal and heinous behaviour, indicative of wanton cruelty. According to a witness, Devon had threatened to kill his father on multiple occasions, including the day before the murder. His violent behaviour, including allegedly beating his cousin with a bat, resulted in multiple orders of protection filed against him by his friends and family. On Monday the 5th of June, Devon was arrested after police tracked a phone call placed by him to a home on the 1300 block of Bond Avenue. A garbage bag containing bloodstained clothes was found inside the residence. He is charged with first degree murder and he's held at the Winnebago County Jail without bond. A married couple are charged with child endangerment after officers found them overdosing in a parking garage. At 8.19pm on Friday the 2nd of June, authorities were called to 200 North Jackson Street in Janesville, Wisconsin on a report of a man and a woman being unconscious in a vehicle. Three children, all under the age of six, were found in the back of the car. Police determined that 31-year-old DeMarco Whitby and 26-year-old Ricky Whitby had both operated the vehicle and used heroin, cocaine and alcohol while driving with the children in the car. The children were unharmed and were turned over to a responsible party. Ricky and DeMarco were medically treated and taken to the Rock County Jail. They're charged with operating while intoxicated with passengers under 16, felony child neglect, possession of cocaine, possession of a narcotic drug, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of THC. A 67-year-old man is behind bars and is accused of shooting a Dollar General store customer over the weekend. The incident occurred on the evening of Sunday the 4th of June at the Dollar General located at 6798 West Gulf to Lake Highway in Crystal River, Florida. According to the Citrus County Sheriff's Office, Oscar Omo de Belmo got into a verbal altercation with the victim at the entrance of the store. Following the dispute, Oscar walked to his vehicle and put his items inside and grabbed his handgun. He then walked across the parking lot, we confronted the victim who was attempting to get into his car. Witnesses advised that they watched Oscar point the firearm at the victim and fire multiple times. No one saw the victim with a weapon. Investigators located six shell casings just feet from the victim's vehicle. The victim was shot a total of four times, twice in the abdominal area, once in the elbow, and a single round grazing the victim's side. The victim was rushed to a local hospital in a critical but stable condition. Oscar was arrested and charged with attempted murder, and he's held at the Citrus County Jail without bond. An 83-year-old man is behind bars and is accused of fatally shooting his 78-year-old ex-partner over a fight they had regarding her new relationship. At around 6.50pm on Saturday the 3rd of June, officers responded to a residence in the 8500 block of Seafield Lane in Rallet, Texas on reports of an unconscious person. When officers arrived, they found Sharon Radabor who had been shot inside her home. She was pronounced dead at the scene. During the investigation, Authorities learnt that this was not a random act of violence, but rather an act that stemmed from a previous relationship. Police identified Wilson Ellett of Trinity, Texas as the primary suspect. At around 5.30pm the following day, Wilson was taken into custody. While questioned, Wilson allegedly confessed to detectives that he fatally shot Sharon after confrontation about a new relationship. Wilson is charged with murder, and he's had on a $1 million bond. 58-year-old Susan Lawrence is behind bars for allegedly fatally shooting her neighbour 35-year-old Ajika's AJ Owens last week. Sheriff Billy Woods of the Marin County Sheriff's Office in Ocala, Florida said that Ajika's was a 35-year-old mother of four and the fatal shooting was a culmination of a two-and-a-half-year feud between the neighbours. 
According to the Sheriff's Office, evidence showed that over time, Susan had become angry over Jika's children playing in the field close to her apartment. On the night of Friday the 2nd of June, Susan got into an argument with the children and was overheard yelling at them by a neighbour. During the argument, Susan threw a roller skate at Ajika's 10-year-old son and hit him in the toe. The boy and his 12-year-old brother then went to speak to Susan and she opened her door and swung at them with an umbrella. They told their mother what happened and Ajika approached Susan's home, knocked on the door multiple times and demanded that Susan come outside. Susan then fired one shot through the apartment door, striking Ajika in her upper chest. At around 9pm that night, deputies initially responded to a trespassing court Susan's apartment located in the 1600 block of Southwest 107th Lane in Ocala, Florida. When they arrived, they found Ajika suffering from a gunshot wound. She was taken to a local hospital where she later died. Authorities said that at the time she was shot, Ajika's 10-year-old son was standing beside her. When questioned by investigators, Susan claimed that she acted in self-defense and that Ajika was trying to break down a door. Susan said that Ajika had come after her in the past and had previously attacked her. Authorities said that through their investigation, which included obtaining witness statements, digital evidence, surveillance footage and forensic evidence, they were able to establish that Susan's actions were not justifiable under Florida law. On the night of the 6th of June, Susan was arrested and booked into the Marin County Jail. She's charged with manslaughter with a firearm, culpable negligence, battery and two counts of assault. If convicted on the manslaughter charge, Susan faces up to 30 years in prison. The investigation into the matter continues. A man has celebrated a record deal by burning money at a party over the weekend, got into an argument with a music manager who shot him multiple times, killing him. At 1.17am on Sunday the 4th of June, the victim, 32-year-old Jaron Smith, was found inside a Ford Mustang that crashed at the corner of Orange Avenue and Carolyn Street in Daytona Beach, Florida. 27-year-old Robert Blue, who witnesses described as a music manager, was arrested the following day. Jaron was transported to the Halifax Health Medical Center, where he died of gunshot wounds. Investigators learned from witnesses that someone had rented a suite at 955 Orange Avenue to host a party for 20 people, but more people showed up because there was free alcohol and food. A witness who was with Jaron when he was shot told investigators that Jaron was outside burning money because he was excited that he just signed a record deal and had received 1 million views on Instagram. Robert saw Jaron burning the money and asked him why he was doing that. Jaron and Robert got into an argument and Jaron challenged Robert to a fight. Robert then took out a gun and pointed it at Jaron, who in turn sprayed Robert with pepper spray before punching him in the face. Witnesses said they heard at least seven gunshots fired from Robert's gun. Robert was seen driving away from the scene along Carolyn Street. The following day, Robert was taken into custody and was charged with second degree murder. Robert's also previously been arrested on unrelated charges, such as aggravated assault, resisting arrest and possession of cannabis. A 24-year-old mother has been charged with the death of a 5-year-old son. On the evening of the 23rd of January, Derricka Fleming put her son Lamar Tyrone Mitchell to bed in their apartment before going upstairs to visit a neighbour at the Saraville Apartments in the Clinton Township of Detroit, Michigan. While she was gone, the boy got out of bed and left the apartment. The following morning, he was found frozen to death in a nearby playground. On Wednesday the 31st of May, Derricka was arraigned on one count of involuntary manslaughter. She has been placed in jail with a cash bond of $100,000. If released, she will need to wear a GPS tether. Her next court appearance is set for the 12th of June. If convicted, she faces up to 15 years in prison. 19-year-old Jose Contreras is behind bars after being accused of fatally shooting his girlfriend, 18-year-old Zoe Salinas. The incident occurred on the night of Tuesday the 30th of May near the intersection of Tyler Avenue and Bond Street in Fresno, California. Investigators said the couple got into a heated argument in the car that led to the shooting. It's unclear what the argument was about. At 10.49pm, authorities responded to the scene on reports of gunfire. When first responders arrived, Zoe was found in the car unresponsive from gunshot wounds. Officers and paramedics attempted life-saving measures. However, Zoe was declared dead at the scene. Witnesses helped officers identify Zoe's boyfriend Jose as a suspect. Police said Jose ran to a nearby neighborhood after the shooting. 
Officers quickly located Jose. He was armed with a semi-automatic handgun at the time of his arrest. Jose allegedly confessed to shooting Zoe. Authorities said that the couple had been dating for about four years. Jose initially underwent a mental evaluation after threatening to harm himself. Jose is currently held at the Fresno County Jail and is charged with murder. The investigation into the matter continues. 23-year-old Damien Kominger and his 20-year-old girlfriend Ivana Perlozzi were arrested over the weekend after her three-month infant daughter Genevieve was found dumped in a pile of trash after Damien reportedly shook her to death. Police located her body at around 10.30pm on Sunday the 28th of May in a wooded area near West 161st Street and Summit Avenue in the Bronx, New York. Authorities said that the family had been living in a transitional housing shelter at 1041 University Avenue about a quarter of a mile down the road from where her body was found. On the 14th of May, Damien and Ivana had placed their daughter's corpse in a onesie and a hat, wrapped her in a blanket and placed her in a stroller. They then pushed the stroller containing her body outside the shelter to make it look like they were going out for a family outing, without raising any suspicion from shelter staff. After walking several blocks, the pair then placed Genevieve's body into a garbage bag, before disposing of the bag and the stroller into a wooded area amongst a pile of trash. Damien's father, 47-year-old Donald Cominger, said that his son became evasive after his call from Louisiana this past Sunday, adding that he never heard sounds of his granddaughter in the background as they spoke. Damien eventually admitted to his father that Genevieve had died. He told him that on the night of the 13th of May, Genevieve was screaming so he shook her out of frustration. He said that he then went to sleep because he was tired. He said that when he woke up, Genevieve was stiff and cold and not breathing. Donald then reported his son to police. Damien confessed to killing Genevieve to investigators, and he and Nirvana led them to where they disposed of Genevieve's body. The medical examiner has yet to determine an exact cause of death, which has been deemed a homicide. On the night of Sunday the 28th of May, Damien was taken into custody on suspicion of murder and concealment of a corpse, while Nirvana was arrested for concealment of a corpse. As Damien was arrested, he declared his love for his daughter and said it was a mistake. Damien is held in custody without bail pending a court hearing on Friday. Rezavan has been released with monitoring. The investigation into the matter continues. Authorities are investigating a mass shooting that left a woman dead and six others injured. The incident occurred at around 1am on Sunday the 4th of June in the 4800 block of West Iowa Street in the Austin neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. Terrier was part of a large group of about 100 people gathered to honour her ex-boyfriend, who was killed in a car crash four years ago. Investigators said that an argument erupted when someone within the group began shooting. Terrier was one of seven people shot as the crowd ran for cover. Her family said she was struck twice in the head. She was transported to the Mount Sinai Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The other victims include a 17-year-old girl who was shot in the leg, and a 28-year-old woman who was shot in the ear and they were both treated in hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Four men aged between 27 to 29 were also shot, three of which suffered non-life-threatening injuries, but the fourth man remains hospitalised in the critical condition with a gunshot wound to his arm and chest. Authorities said the gunman was captured on CCTV, dressed in jeans and a white top, and was seen running towards Cicero Avenue. The motive in the attack remains unclear. No arrests have been made, as the investigation into the matter continues. A man is behind bars after allegedly fatally shooting his wife early Monday morning. At just after midnight on the 5th of June, a man called 911 to report his stepfather, 43-year-old David Hahn Oswalski, had just shot his wife multiple times inside the house on East First Place in Mesa, Arizona. Officers arrived to find David walking out of the home. As he was being detained, officers noticed what appeared to be blood on his hands and clothes. When Mesa police asked if anyone else was in the home, he said no before reportedly saying, She's inside dead on the bed. When officers went inside, they found David's wife Amy dead from multiple gunshot wounds in the master bedroom. Officers recovered two guns in that room, along with another in the kitchen counter and multiple shell casings. Investigators said that Amy's son said he woke up to a commotion outside his bedroom door at around midnight. When he opened the door, he said he saw his mother and stepfather arguing. He told investigators that he heard David say that God told him he wasn't part of the family and that Amy and her son were trying to hurt him. The argument moved into the backyard before Amy and her son went back inside. Amy's son told investigators that David returned a few minutes later, went to the master bedroom closet and came out with a handgun. He said that's when he saw his stepfather shoot his mum five times, 
striking her multiple times in the face. He said as he ran from the home to call 911, he heard 10 more gunshots. David was booked on a charge of first degree murder. Two people behind bars and were accused of attacking a man with a hammer. At around 1.45am on Tuesday the 30th of May, authorities responded to the 200 block of Columbia Street in Shreveport, Louisiana on reports of an attack. Responding officers were informed that a man, whose name remains anonymous, was being attacked by two people. Upon arrival, they found that the victim had been struck multiple times in the head with a hammer. He was transported to a local hospital with severe injuries, but he's expected to survive. During the investigation, detectives identified 34-year-old Colin Nading and 32-year-old Brittany Behan as the suspects. On Friday the 2nd of June, they were arrested and charged with aggravated battery. Authorities have not discussed a motive in the attack as the investigation into the matter continues. Authorities are investigating after a 34-year-old man was fatally shot over the weekend. At around 1.20am on Sunday the 4th of June, Authorities responded to the 300 block of East Huron Street in the Street of Ville neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois and reports of shots fired. When first responders arrived, they found Zeril Gist with multiple gunshot wounds. He was transported to the Northwest Memorial Hospital in a critical condition where he succumbed to his injuries. Another victim, a 27-year-old man whose name remains anonymous, showed up at the same hospital with a gunshot wound to his left leg and said he was with the first victim. Authorities said that witnesses on scene were very uncooperative and refused to answer any questions about the incident. No arrests have been made as the investigation into the matter continues. 41-year-old Michael Johnson is accused of living with his mother's dead body and using her social security benefits. At just before 10am on Thursday the 1st of June, legal process division officials and police responded to a home in the 400 block of 5th Street in Bell, West Virginia to serve Peggy Johnson an eviction notice. At the scene, authorities reportedly noticed suspicious signs coming from inside the home and no indications of anyone present. They detected a foul smell emanating from the residence as well as a lot of flies present. After entering the home, authorities located Peggy's decomposing body. Her son Michael Johnson was found hiding inside a closet and he was taken into custody. During an interview, Michael reportedly confessed to living with his mother for the past few years and revealed that she died in December of 2022. Peggy allegedly received around $1,000 in monthly social security benefits, and her son continued receiving and using those benefits after her death. In total, Michael used about five to $6,000. According to investigators, Michael was not on his mother's accounts, nor was he authorized to collect or use his mother's social security benefits. He was arrested and charged with obtaining money, property and services by false pretenses, is held at the South Regional Jail in a $2,500 bond. Due to the severity of the victim's decomposition, the Sheriff's Office said the remains have not been positively identified, and the West Virginia State Medical Examiner's Office will perform an autopsy this week. Officials said they believe the person has been deceased for quite a long time. Authorities said that Michael's considered a person of interest in the death investigation. A 19-year-old woman was arrested on Thursday after threatening a man and a child with a knife. Brucia Malin Marina de Leon was charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, battery, and child neglect. The incident occurred at around 6.15pm on the 1st of June, when authorities responded to a property at Roy's Trailer Park at 6500 Maloney Avenue in Stock Island, Florida, on reports of domestic violence. When deputies arrived, Brucia and the victims, a 42-year-old man and his six-year-old son were present. A man told investigators that he attempted to leave with his son when Brucia bit him on the back. He then locked himself in the juvenile in a vehicle outside the residence. She then reportedly grabbed a knife and attempted to get inside the van and said she will kill them both. Brucia was taken into custody and held at the Monroe County Jail on a $165,000 bond. Authorities said that there was no life-threatening injuries reported. It's unclear what Brucia's relationship is with the victims or the motive behind the attack as the investigation into the matter continues. A 26-year-old man is behind bars on three felony counts of battery against healthcare workers. On the morning of Thursday the 18th of May, authorities responded to the St. Luke's Canyon View Behavioral Health Services in Twin Falls, Idaho on reports of an out-of-control patient. Employees told police that 26-year-old Tyler Dominiquez was making threats about self-harm 
and was throwing himself into a door. When police tried to intervene, Tyler reportedly punched a security guard and spat on the faces of the security guard and a healthcare worker, as well as kicked the healthcare workers in the legs while being restrained. He's been held on a $50,000 bond. A 37-year-old woman was arrested after her 11-month-old daughter died after being left in a hot car for three hours while she officiated a church service. At around 1pm on Sunday the 28th of May, authorities responded to a 911 call from the Mount of Olives Evangelical Church in Palm Bay, Florida for an unresponsive baby. Investigators said that Belay Moom left a baby in the car and she arrived late at the church for a service. The church service is run by Belay and her pastor husband Jamark Moom and other family members attend the congregation. Police said that Blaine thought that someone had brought a daughter into the church, but once the three-hour service was over, Blaine did not see the baby inside the building, so she went to a car and found an unresponsive child strapped into the car seat. Paramedics performed CPR on the child, before rushing her to the Palm Bay Community Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. As the temperatures reached around 79 degrees Fahrenheit, the internal temperature of the car reached far higher, at roughly 120 degrees Fahrenheit. On Thursday the 1st of June, Blaine was arrested and booked into the Brevard County Jail and is charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child. She was released the next day after posting a $15,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A missing woman was found dead and on fire in Alabama after she left to buy something from a seller on Facebook Marketplace. At around 4pm on Wednesday the 31st of May, Mother of two, 31-year-old Jamira Ivory Fowler, left her home in the 500 block of 41st Street North in Birmingham, Alabama to meet up with someone to make a purchase from Facebook Marketplace, but she never returned. At around 9pm on Thursday the 1st of June, police received reports of a burning body on the side of the street along Sellers Road in Roebuck, roughly six miles from where Jamira was last seen. Police and firefighters arrived at the scene and found a woman's body still on fire and worked to extinguish the flames. Officers observed visible signs of trauma on the victim. The medical examiners later identified the body to be that of Jamira and said she'd been shot before being set on fire. Her death has been ruled a homicide. Jamira's vehicle was found at a separate location, but authorities have not stated where that location was. Authorities have said they're unable to confirm whether Jamira's death was a result of the Facebook marketplace meetup at this time and the motive in the killing remains unclear. No arrests have been made to date as the investigation into the matter continues. A man fatally shot his partner, the infant daughter, and wounded another girl before taking his own life along the banks of a river. At around midday on Saturday the 3rd of June, authorities responded to a duplex home at 124 Elkin Street in Franklin, New Hampshire, and reports of shots fired. One neighbour reported hearing at least five gunshots. When officers arrived, they found 35-year-old Nicole Hughes and 18-month-old daughter Ariel Bell deceased from multiple gunshot wounds and the deaths were ruled a homicide. A second child who was five years old was at the scene and suffered from a gunshot wound to her right arm and a laceration to her back. She was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and was treated and released. Authorities said she's staying with an extended family as she recovers. Authorities immediately identified 42-year-old Jamie Bell as a shooter. He had fled the scene and an extensive search began for him. The New Hampshire State Police helicopter and the SWAT team responded to the area, with multiple law enforcement agencies joining the search. At around 5.30pm, Jamie was found dead on the banks of the nearby Merrimack River, with a single self-inflicted incised wound to his neck. An autopsy determined that he took his own life. The New Hampshire Attorney General's office described Jamie as an intimate partner of Nicole and the father of the girl he shot to death. The department said that the five-year-old girl's Nicole's daughter from a different relationship. Jamie has a criminal past. He's been jailed multiple times over the last 15 years for convictions relating to assaults, burglaries, DUIs, weapon charges, drug charges and more. The motive behind the triple shooting remains unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. A man is behind bars after allegedly fatally shot his son over the weekend. At around 2.30pm on Saturday the 3rd of June, authorities responded to a home at 2518 Ralph Avenue in Chively, Kentucky and reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they found 21-year-old Jordan Qualls who had been shot inside the residence and he had died at the scene. 
Police arrested Jordan's father, 59-year-old William Qualls, in connection with the shooting and charged him with murder. Investigators said that when they got there, the suspect was outside the house with his hands up. William's mother told police that an argument happened between the three of them and a son shot a grandson during it. William told police that while he was downstairs, he heard Jordan arguing with his grandmother and his sister. He said he went upstairs to calm everyone down, but after returning downstairs, he said he continued to hear arguing and he got his handgun from his bedroom. William said that he then went to the kitchen and saw his mother, Jordan's grandmother, on the floor, and that's when he shot his son in the head. William is set to be arraigned at 9am on Monday. Gas station owner 58-year-old Rick Chow is accused of chasing 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton from his store and fatally shooting him after his mistaken for shoplifting. The incident occurred at just after 8pm on Sunday the 28th of May at 7441 Park Lane Road in Columbia, South Carolina. Rick believed the teen stole four bottles of water from his Express Smart Shell station but authorities say the boy put the bottles back in the cooler. Following a verbal confrontation, he exited the business and ran away. Rick and his son chased Cyrus towards a nearby apartment complex, where the teenager fell down and got back up. Rick's son told his dad that Cyrus had a gun, when the store owner fatally shot Cyrus once in the back, piercing his heart. The wound caused hemorrhaging and significant damage to Cyrus's heart. He was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Investigators found a gun several feet from where the team was shot, However, there was no evidence that Cyrus ever pointed a gun at Rick or his son. Investigators also said that Rick did not fear for his life when he shot Cyrus. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott said they have reviewed surveillance footage as part of the investigation. He said that there was no evidence that Cyrus stole anything whatsoever. Regardless, even if he had shoplifted four bottles of water, which is what he initially took out of the cooler and then put them back, even if he'd done that, that's not something you shoot anybody over, much less a 14-year-old. But you just don't do that, he said. Richland County Coroner Nadia Rutherford said there was no sign Cyrus fought Rick before he ran out of the store, and added that there was no injury to his body other than the abrasion from falling, and the gunshot wound to his right lower back. On Monday the 29th of May, Rick was arrested and charged with murder. He's held at the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Centre, and bond has been denied. Hours later, rioters gathered at the gas station and vandalised the business, and stole items from the store. The sheriff said that those who took part will be held responsible. The investigation into the matter continues. 34-year-old Zara Ferro Urolo is behind bars following a fatal shooting on Thursday night. At around 7.30pm on the 25th of May, authorities responded to an apartment at 9610 Arrow Ridge Drive in Louisville, Kentucky on reports of a shooting. When officers arrived, they found a man inside the bedroom with a gunshot wound to the head. Medics pronounced him dead at the scene. He was identified as 66-year-old Jason Strongbringer. Investigators said that Jason reportedly hit Zara in the head with a wrapping paper roll during a verbal altercation. Upset, Zara then retrieved a handgun and shot the man in the head. Zara allegedly admitted to the crime and was arrested and charged with murder. Zara is held at the Louisville Metropolitan Department of Corrections with bond set at $250,000. The investigation into the matter continues. A man is behind bars and is accused of fatally shooting another man inside a motel room. At just after 10.30pm on Wednesday the 24th of May, authorities responded to the Budget Motor Inn at 2151 North Jamestown Drive in Petersburg, Virginia on reports of an unresponsive man. When officers arrived, they found 54-year-old Brian Chambers with a gunshot wound and he was pronounced dead at the scene. During the investigation, authorities identified Raymond Ruffin, whose age has not been disclosed as a suspect. On Wednesday the 31st of May, he was arrested and charged with second degree murder, use of a firearm and possession of a firearm by a known felon. Brian, who was a travelling tattoo artist and painter, was well known to the Petersburg community. He was the owner of Bad Monkey Tattoo and went by the name of B-Train. Friends and clients remember Brian as a talented painter who loved to show off his art. Donna Guernsey said, I just couldn't believe it. He was so full of life. He was amazingly talented. He came to us and he was awesome. She said he had been to her house just days before his death, and she showed off a new tattoo he did for her. Authorities have not disclosed the motive in the killing, as the investigation into the matter continues. A man and a woman are accused of beating a Sonic manager after incorrectly receiving jalapenos on a hot dog over the weekend. 
At around 7.30pm on Saturday the 27th of May, Quantario Simmons and Andres Brisco arrived at the fast food restaurant at 83rd Street and Lewis Avenue in Tulsa, Oklahoma with two other people and ordered a hot dog with a side of jalapeno poppers at the drive through The group, however, received a hot dog with jalapenos on it, triggering an argument between them and the Sonic employees. The manager stepped in to try and defuse the situation, only for Quantoris to get out of the vehicle and attempt to enter the closed-off section of the restaurant. When the manager tried to stop him, Quantoris dragged the man outside and began beating him, punching him repeatedly, and body slamming him to the ground. Andreas got out of the vehicle and joined in the fight, after still being upset at the order. Andreas then threw punches, but ended up hitting Quantoris more than she hit the manager. The manager was hospitalized with several injuries. The suspects were tracked down to the Red River apartment complex in Riverside, where they were arrested for aggravated assault and battery. A man is behind bars after a woman's body was found on the side of a highway early this week, after falling out of the car she was travelling in. At around 12.13am on Monday the 5th of June, authorities responded to a call of a body found northbound along Interstate 89 in Hopkinton, New Hampshire, near the 7 mile marker. When troopers arrived, they found a deceased woman in the breakdown lane of the highway. She was unable to be identified at the time. New Hampshire State Police described her as 5 foot 1, 111 pounds, 18 to 30 years old, with fair skin, blue eyes, and strawberry blonde hair with neon green colored fingernails and toenails. She had a tattoo on the back of a feather with birds flying out of it. Investigators believe that the body would have been laying there for no more than an hour. Later that day, Authorities identified the individual as 27-year-old Gina Majorano of Henneken, New Hampshire. An autopsy determined that Gina died from blunt impact head injuries. On the evening of Tuesday, the 6th of June, authorities arrested 30-year-old Thomas Hanley of Henneken, New Hampshire. He was charged with felony conduct after an accident, breach of bail and stalking. On Wednesday, the 7th of June, Thomas appeared in court. Prosecutors said the two were driving together when Gina somehow fell out of the vehicle. Instead of stopping to help, Thomas drove away and contacted police the next day. Defence attorney Meredith Lugo said it appears to be the working theory that unfortunately both of these individuals were at least allegedly significantly impaired by methamphetamine. Mary Mack Superior Court Judge John Kissinger said, however impaired somebody is, to drive away and leave them on the side of the highway is very concerning. Prosecutors said Thomas shouldn't have been in contact with Gina because of a prior restraining order. Meredith said that Thomas is clearly distraught by the situation. He doesn't at all strike me as someone who is uncaring for the victim, she said. Thomas was released on a $5,000 bond and was ordered to be placed on electronic monitoring. He's scheduled to be back in court in August. In a Facebook post, Gina's aunt identified Thomas as the father of Gina's children. The investigation into the matter continues. 39-year-old Brandy Lynn Parker was arrested this week with the death of a one-year-old child at their home in 2020. At around 10.40am on the 23rd of January 2020, authorities responded to a 911 call at Brookside Apartments in Lynchburg, Virginia and reports of an infant not breathing. Brandy told dispatch that a two-year-old child fell asleep on top of a one-year-old infant on the couch and that she found an infant stuck in the couch. When first responders arrived, they attempted life-saving measures on the unresponsive child. The baby was rushed to Lynchburg General Hospital but was pronounced dead on arrival. Officers on scene detected an odour of alcohol coming from Brandy and she admitted to consuming alcohol the previous night. Child Protective Services responded to the scene and submitted her to a preliminary breath test which came back at 0.14. Brandy was the sole caretaker of the infant and the two-year-old at the time of the infant's death. Authorities said that after a lengthy investigation, detectives determined that reckless disregard for human life contributed to the child's death. On Wednesday the 7th of June, Brandy was arrested and charged with felony murder and felony abuse and neglect. She's held at the Blue Ridge Regional Jail without bond. A 30-year-old woman is behind bars for fatally shooting a man and attempting to burn his body over a land dispute. At around 9am on Thursday the 1st of June, Dennis Berry called the Fulton County Sheriff's Office to report there was a body in front of his gate on Briarwood Road in Viola, Arkansas. When officers arrived at the property, they found the body of 59-year-old David Sutherland. He had at least one gunshot wound to his back. His head was severely beaten, he had a piece of barbed wire around his neck, and an attempt was made to burn his body. Investigators collected pieces of evidence at the scene, including a partial can of lighter fluid. Dennis told investigators that Stacy Hickman was at his house on the 30th of May, 
and borrowed his Ford Ranger. He asked David to follow her in his Dodge Calabar. Stacy and David had been around each other a lot and were reportedly friends. Soon after, investigators found David's body. His car was reported stolen. Stacy returned Dennis's Ford on the 31st of May, but on the 2nd of June, a Salem Police Department officer saw Stacy inside David's car. The officer arrested her for theft by receiving. In an interview with detectives, Stacy reportedly confessed to shooting David and burning his body. She said she used the rifle that investigators found in Dennis's car. She claimed that David was trying to get some land that she was supposed to receive. On the 31st of May, Stacy texted her father writing, Hey, it's on the property. Have a little issue, but I've taken care of it via loyalty to the land, and convo didn't go well. But, um, I'll let you know I'll be there shortly. I'm fixing to pull in. Stacy was arrested and charged with first degree murder, felony with firearm and abuse of the corpse. She's held at the Fulton County Jail on a $1 million bond. Forty-five-year-old Danny Suttle Jr. is behind bars and he's accused of fatally shooting his 39-year-old girlfriend Tiffany Raymer. The shooting occurred early Friday morning on the 9th of June at an apartment complex located at 40 Iowa Street in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Danny and Tiffany spent the night together in an apartment using drugs. Danny told officers that he shot his girlfriend after he became paranoid and thought the woman had friends coming to rob him. He then left the apartment and was found at a gas station wearing no shoes and with a gun in his waistband. Danny was arrested and charged with criminal homicide, aggravated and simple assault and recklessly endangering another person. He's held at the Fateville County Prison without bond. 44-year-old Jamie May Smith was arrested last week for stuffing the remains of 30-year-old Jose Lopez into a barrel and leaving it in a motel room. On Saturday the 3rd of June, Authorities responded to an anonymous tip, stating that there was a dead body in a room on the second floor of the Motel 6 at 7707 Lee Highway in Chattanooga, Tennessee. When first responders arrived at the scene, they were directed to two rooms next to each other on the second floor. In one of the rooms, officers located the body of a deceased male, which had been stuffed into a metal barrel and covered with a blanket inside room 216. The deceased man was quickly identified as Jose Lopez. In the second room, Officers found about one and a half grams of meth. Investigators found hotel records that showed one of the two rooms had been rented by Jose and the other had been rented by Jamie. Footage from the motel surveillance camera reportedly showed a woman with long blonde braids leaving 216 prior to police arriving at the location. Motel management reportedly identified the woman as Jamie. Later that day, an officer returned to the motel to retrieve the surveillance footage and while he was speaking to an employee at the front desk, Jamie walked into the room. Police questioned Jamie about the body found in room 216. She told investigators that she knew Jose and that the two of them would do meth together in their rooms all the time. Jamie told police that about four days ago, she went into a room and saw Jose laying on the bed and appeared to be breathing. She said that she left the room, but when she came back, Jose was unresponsive. Jamie said that she freaked out, so she went to the baseball fields down the road and grabbed a barrel. She then brought the barrel back to her room and put it on its side. She then placed Jose on the ground and put him inside of the barrel. She said that she then put the blanket over the barrel. She stated that she wanted the body of her room, she did not want to call police, and that she did not want to go to jail. Jamie was arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse and possession of meth. She's held at the Hamilton County Jail on a $10,000 bond. A 34-year-old man is behind bars for allegedly drowning his 56-year-old mother. At 8.25am on Monday the 5th of June, Eric Megan called 911 to say he drowned his mother Victoria Palmer in the Still River at Harry Brook Park in New Milford, Connecticut. He told his that he kept hearing demons. I was feeling them. I'm not feeling them now that she's dead. The demons have been constantly plaguing me, he added. Eric stayed on the phone for several minutes as he described the drowning and was taken into custody a short time later after giving police his exact location along the river. Victoria was pulled from the ward on rush to nearby New Milford Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. While interviewed, Eric told detectives he invited his mother to go for a walk in the park with him, something they did regularly, knowing he planned on hurting her. Upon reaching the riverbank, Eric described how he pushed his mother into the water and putting her into a headlock and holding her beneath the surface for about 10 minutes. He said that his mother fought him for several minutes, 
but he could keep hold of her as he slowly drifted farther from the shore and deeper into the water until she finally went completely limp. He said that he then returned to the shore, pulling her body along with him and leaving her floating face down in the water. He then called police about half an hour after killing her. He later told detectives that he'd been having a hard time for the past couple of weeks and that he had sought help for his mental health issues. At the time of his mother's drowning, Eric had not been taking his anti-anxiety medication. Eric told investigators that he had not slept at all the previous night because he had been tormented by demons. He described the demons as insects all over him, but he could not see them. He could only feel them. He stated that strangling his cats was his first attempt at making the demons stop, but that was not enough. When asked why he chose his mother, he stated because I love her the most. He stated he feels safe now. He believed that his mother loved him so much that she would be willing to sacrifice herself to save him. Eric's been charged with murder, and he's been held on a $2 million bond. His next court appearance is set for the 11th of July. A woman is behind bars after a three-year-old son accidentally shot himself in the head. At 6.15pm on Wednesday the 7th of July, authorities arrived at St. Vincent's Hospital in Ascension Street in Indianapolis, Indiana in reference to the shooting. The child's mother, Portia Walker, told police she found a handgun in the box in her backyard at 833 Independence Avenue in Evansville, Indiana. She said she brought the box into the house, took the gun out, and put it back into the unlocked box. She said while she attended to other children in the home, she said a three-year-old son got hold of the gun and shot himself in the head. She said she didn't call 911, but instead called family members who came over and took the child to hospital. The boy is expected to survive. Portia consented to having police search her home for the gun, and while at the house, officers found 290 grams of meth in bags, placed in children's clothing in the bedroom closet. In addition, two digital scales and two bags of marijuana were found in a pack and play in the master bedroom. A handgun was located on top of a kitchen cabinet and was found to have been reported stolen in March. Portia denied knowing anything about the drugs found in her home. Her three children were placed with the Department of Child Services. Portia is charged with negligence of a dependent, meth dealing and theft of a firearm. She remains held at the Vanderburg County Jail. A funeral homeowner is behind bars after allegedly fatally shooting a 30-year-old man and wounding a woman at a young girl's funeral. At 1.20pm on Tuesday the 6th of June, authorities responded to reports of shots fired at the Washington National Cemetery, located at 4101 Suitland Road in Suitland, Maryland. When officers arrived, they found Ronald Stephen Banks injured from a gunshot wound and another victim with a graze wound. Menix transported Ronald to a nearby hospital, where he died shortly thereafter. During the investigation, detectives learnt that 48-year-old Wilson Chavis owns and operates a funeral service on Suitland Road. He allegedly confronted two other people affiliated with another funeral company, with which Wilson has a long-standing business dispute, just as a burial service was preparing to get underway. Several funeral attendees become upset with Wilson and confronted him over his behaviour when Wilson fired two shots. Wilson fled the scene in his vehicle following the shooting, and minutes later police pulled him over and he was arrested. Robert attended the funeral as a pallbearer in honour of 10-year-old Ariana Davis, who was shot in the family car on the 14th of May along the 3700 block of Hay Street northeast in Washington, D.C., while heading home after celebrating Mother's Day. She died three days later. Metropolitan D.C. police are offering a $45,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the suspect or suspects. Wilson is charged with murder, attempted murder and other related charges. Ariana's mother Antoinette Belk said, I'm so traumatised what's happened at my daughter's burial site. I didn't even get to lay her down, even put her in the ground. And another incident happened. This is so traumatising to me. My children, my whole family. It's trauma after trauma, she said. A man and his two sons have been arrested on murder charges in connection to a fatal shooting incident this week. 53-year-old Rayla Roscoe. 28-year-old Jose Orozco and 21-year-old Christian Orozco were accused in a roadway confrontation that resulted in the death of 32-year-old Marcus Fino Jr. The shooting occurred just before 6pm on Tuesday the 6th of June, along the 5900 block of Donovan Drive, near Montoya Road in El Paso, Texas. Raul was driving a truck and started following Marcus who was driving a Chrysler 300. Marcus had three passengers in his car, which included his 10-year-old son who was in the back seat. Roll told investigators he saw the Chrysler 300 pass his home several times earlier that day and believed the vehicle may have been the same one that crashed into his mailbox a month earlier. 
He said he started following the Chrysler from his home into Donovan Drive when he tried to get the license plates. During the chase, Rule called his sons for help. The two sons manoeuvred their vehicle in front of Marcus's car, blocking him in, while Rule hit Marcus's car from behind with his truck and blocked him in from behind. An argument erupted in the street which turned into a fight between the brothers and Marcos and a man who was a passenger in Marcus's car. During the fight, Marcus tried to take Jose's gun from him. When they wrestled for it, Jose shot Marcus after he gained control of the gun. Rule and his sons then left the scene and called police from a different location. A male passenger in Marcus's car flagged down a police car along the 6100 block of Donovan Drive, near Arcraft Road. Marcus was rushed to the University Medical Center, but succumbed to his injuries. Jose was jailed under a $1 million bond, while Rule and Christian were each jailed under $500,000 bond at the El Paso County Detention Center. A suspect is behind bars after a man was found dead at a motel last week. At around 3.40am on Wednesday the 7th of June, authorities were called to the Economy Lodge at 1015 Broad Street in Portsmouth, Virginia and reports of shots fired. When officers arrived, they found 52-year-old David Williams who had been fatally shot. During the investigation, detectives identified 44-year-old Will Patterson Sr. as a suspect. The next day, Will was arrested and charged with second-degree murder, use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Will is held at the Portsmouth City Jail without bond. The motive in the attack is unclear, as the investigation into the matter continues. A homeless man remains on the run after fatally shooting another man. And just after 1.30pm on Friday the 9th of June, authorities responded to the 1900 block of Dinoon Avenue in the East Linden neighbourhood of Columbus, Ohio on report of a shooting. When officers arrived, they located 32-year-old Rafael Jones suffering from a gunshot wound. Paramedics rushed him to the Grant Medical Center, but he was pronounced dead just over an hour later. Prior to the shooting, police said that Rafael was arguing with 28-year-old Sir Robert Martin Sidnor. During the argument, police said that Sir Robert pulled out a handgun and shot Rafael. Sir Robert was seen running from the scene and may have been in possession of a backpack that belonged to Rafael. Columbus Police Detectives filed a warrant charging Sir Robert with murder. Police said Sir Robert was recently living in an inoperable vehicle, parked close to where the argument and deadly shooting occurred. Anyone with information to the suspect's whereabouts is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. A man was fatally shot after an argument. At 8.36pm on Friday the 9th of June, authorities responded to a residence in the 7100 block of Jackson Street in the Taconi neighborhood of northeast Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and reports of a shooting. When officers arrived, they found 38-year-old Thomas Dooner at the front of his home in a critical condition with multiple gunshot wounds to his stomach. He was rushed to the Jefferson Torresdale Hospital by police. He was pronounced dead upon arrival. During the investigation, detectives learnt there was a disagreement between Thomas's daughter and a 31-year-old man, but soon others in the household joined in. The man who started the argument then made threats towards everyone inside the residence before leaving. He returned to the home several minutes later and encountered Thomas, with whom he argued with before. The man pulled out a gun and fired three shots into Thomas's stomach and left in an SUV. The suspect was last seen heading southbound on Roosevelt Boulevard. Police said they know who the suspect is, but have not released his name. Authorities said that a warrant for his arrest has been issued. The investigation into the matter continues. A man is behind bars for fatally shooting his wife. 27-year-old Tavion Glenn is charged with two counts of murder and two counts of felonious assault in the death of 28-year-old Sierra Steele. Tavion turned himself into the Montgomery County Jail in Dayton, Ohio at around 4.30pm on Tuesday the 6th of June and told authorities that he and his wife had a domestic incident and that she was injured at their home. More than 15 officers from the Kettering Police Department responded to the home in the 2500 block of California Avenue in Dayton, Ohio and forced entry into the residence. Officers found Sierra's lifeless body seated on the bathroom floor, with her upper body and head slumped forward. She had been shot several times, with a gunshot wound to the left side of her head, and blood was pouring out of her chest. There were multiple shell casings on the bathroom floor, and a casing and around in the bathtub. Investigators recovered a handgun believed to be used in the shooting, a handwritten letter, among other evidence collected from the home. Police said that the couple's three children who were living at the home have since been placed into the care of relatives, Tavion is held on a $1 million bond. 
A preliminary hearing is scheduled for Friday the 16th of June. It's unclear what events led to the shooting. Authorities said that Tavion did not say if they had been arguing prior to the shooting. The married couple have reportedly been together for almost 10 years. Sierra filed a temporary protection order against Tavion in 2016. After he abused her, she later dropped the charges against him. Her family said the abuse continued, however, and they confronted Tavion about it, telling him he needed to stop. The investigation into the matter continues. A woman is behind bars following the death of a one-month-old daughter. 31-year-old Kerr M. M. Barkley of Clinton Township, Michigan, is accused of shaking the infant and throwing her to the ground during an incident that took place on the 15th of March, causing catastrophic injuries. The baby girl was taken to the hospital, where she died almost a month later. On Thursday the 8th of June, Key was arraigned in the Clinton Township District Court on charges of abuse and murder. She's held at the Macomb County Prison on a $1 million bond. If released, she must be on house arrest and wear a GPS monitor. If convicted, Key faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. She's next scheduled to appear in court on the 20th of June for a probable cause hearing. The investigation into the matter continues. A woman is behind bars after fatally stabbing her ex-boyfriend over the weekend. At 3.03am on Saturday the 10th of June, authorities responded to a home at 4587 Mount Tabor Road in Red Springs, North Carolina on reports of a person stabbed. When officers arrived, they entered the residence and found 51-year-old Eddie Jones deceased. During the investigation, authorities identified Eddie's ex-girlfriend, 35-year-old Santana Marie Hunt, as a suspect. Santana was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. She's held at the Robeson County Detention Center without bond. Eddie survived by his ten children. The motive in the attack is unclear, as the investigation into the matter continues. A 43-year-old man is behind bars for a mass shooting that killed three people and wounded three others during a disagreement at a block party over the weekend. At 7.50pm on Sunday the 11th of June, Authorities responded to a shooting call at the 1000 block of Pennington Place off Edgewood Road in Annapolis, Maryland and found six victims suffering from gunshot wounds. Three were declared dead at the scene and three others were transported to local hospitals in a stable condition. The deceased victims have been identified as 55-year-old Nicholas Morales, 27-year-old Maria Ruiz and 25-year-old Christian Segovia. During the investigation, authorities identified Charles Smith as a suspect and he was arrested later that night. Police recovered a semi-automatic handgun and a long gun at the scene. Authorities said that Mario was hosting a birthday party that night. Investigators said the dispute occurred after Charles's mother, Shirley Smith, called local parking enforcement to complain that a vehicle was blocking a driveway. Mario went over to Shirley's home to talk with her, and the two got into an argument. When Charles arrived home, he confronted Mario about what happened. Things turned physical and Charles pulled out a gun. I tussled over the gun when Charles fatally shot Mario. He then stood over Mario's body and shot him multiple times. Police said he also shot and killed Mario's friend Christian. When others from the party came to see what was happening, Charles retreated inside his residence and began shooting through his front window, fatally striking Mario's father Nicholas and wounding three others. By the time police arrived, Charles had his hands up and surrendered. He admitted to shooting the victims or accusing them of shooting at his home first. Investigators said no witnesses they interviewed saw the victims with a gun. At a press conference on Monday the 12th of June, Annapolis Police Chief Ed Jackson said his department is not ruling anything out in terms of potentially viewing the shooting as a hate crime. He said ostensibly our suspect is a white male and three victims are Latino, but we can't draw any inferences from that. We have to look at every possible angle, he said. Charles is charged with three counts of second degree murder, three counts of attempted second degree murder, three counts of first degree assault and use of a firearm in the commission of a violent crime. He's been held without bond. A 21-year-old man is behind bars for allegedly killing a man whose body was discovered in a burnt home. At 1.14am on Wednesday the 7th of June, authorities responded to a report of a structure fire at 108 East Avalon Avenue in Longview, Texas. Firefighters extinguished the fire and found a victim later identified as 66-year-old Ronnie Moody deceased. Authorities suspected foul play, and officials launched a homicide investigation. The following day, police arrested Donald Ray Miller Jr. on charges of arson and murder. 
He's out of the Gregg County Jail on a $200,000 bond. Police did not specify the suspect's relationship to Ronnie or a motive in the case, as the investigation into the matter continues. 22-year-old Adrian Nicole Vetter is behind bars for allegedly abusing a 10-month-old infant she was babysitting. At 4.04pm on Monday the 5th of June, authorities responded to the 100 block of Becky Drive in Wichita Falls, Texas, on reports of an unresponsive baby. Medics transported the infant to United Regional Hospital, where it was discovered the child had two brain bleeds. The child was immediately airlifted to Cook Children's Medical Center in Fort Worth for emergency medical treatment. A detective spoke to an emergency room doctor who said the infant had severe brain bleeds on both sides of his brain and the injuries to his head were indicative of shaken baby syndrome. That same day, Adrian was interviewed by detectives. She told them that the boy named Sean was watching TV, sitting on the living room floor, when he had a seizure and fell backward, causing him to hit his head on the wooden vinyl flooring. During a follow-up interview a few days later on Thursday the 8th of June, she told the same story but was confronted by detectives with numerous inconsistencies in her original story. Adrian said she was arguing with her husband over the phone about cancelling her wedding. She said the baby was crying and fussy and was refusing to take a nap at around 11am on Monday morning. She then told them that around 3pm, she lost her temper, grabbed the victim out of the crib and struck the back of his head on the side rail of the wooden crib with force in an attempt to get him to stop crying. Adrian then told authorities that she took the child into the hallway and struck the victim's head into the wall of the hallway forcefully. She said that the victim was also gasping for air when she struck his head on the hallway wall. She said that she then took the child to the living room, set him down on the floor and went to the kitchen to get him some milk. She said she returned to find him unconscious and not breathing. She told officers she had mental health disorders, but claims that she takes medication for the disorders. A forensic paediatrician at the children's hospital told police that she believes that Adrian was downplaying what happened. She said that she believes that Adrian forcefully struck the victim's head on the crib and wall several times, not only one time each as Adrian claimed. The child suffered seizures due to severe abusive head trauma and injuries to his spine, including severe sprain and fracture to the upper part of his neck. The baby's in a very critical condition and it's unclear whether he'll survive. Detectives later spoke to the victim's mother, Felicity Dishman, he said that Adrian told her the same story about what had happened as she told investigators. She said Adrian had been watching a 10-month-old son for two weeks, and that Adrian has a temper, but she's never seen her take it out on children, just her own dogs. On Friday the 9th of June, Adrian was arrested and booked into the Wichita County Jail. She's charged with injury to a child and is held on a $1 million bond. A 32-year-old man is behind bars for fatally shooting his 29-year-old girlfriend. At 7.53pm on Sunday the 11th of June, authorities responded to an apartment at 2020 Bentworth Drive in Houston, Texas on report of a shooting. When first responders arrived, they went inside the apartment and found Jasmine McHenry with multiple gunshot wounds. Paramedics pronounced her dead at the scene. During the investigation, detectives identified Thomas Wilson Alexander as a suspect and he was arrested. Authorities said that the couple got into a verbal altercation when Thomas pulled out a gun. Concerned for her safety, Jasmine then told her nine-year-old daughter Zaria to call her grandmother Cynthia Demerson. The girl called her grandmother when Cynthia heard Jasmine say that Thomas was going to shoot her, so she rushed over to the apartment. While she was on her way, Thomas fatally shot Jasmine three times. Two of the times she was shot in the head at close range in front of Azaria, as well as the couple's son, three-year-old Aidan Alexander. Jasmine's family said that the couple had been together for about three years. Cynthia said she has no idea why Thomas shot and killed her daughter, and says she wants to know why he did it. Cynthia said she will now raise her two grandchildren. Thomas is charged with murder, and he's been held at the Harris County Jail on a $1 million bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A 43-year-old mother is accused of fatally shooting her 27-year-old son after they got into an argument about a ride on Moa. On Wednesday the 31st of May, authorities responded to a residence along the 100 block of Stonewood Road in Glencoe, Arkansas after Tabitha Pebbler rang 911 to report that she shot her son Brandon Crisco. When deputies arrived, Brandon was pronounced dead at the scene. When questioned, Tabitha told detectives that she was mowing a lawn on a ride on Moa and got stuck. She said she asked Brandon to help get the mower unstuck, but her son was upset to help her to get the mower unstuck. After becoming stuck a second time, Brandon called her a bitch and shoved her off the lawnmower. 
She said her car was about 250 yards away and that she and Brandon both made their way to the vehicle, but she took the short way while he took the long way. She said she retrieved a pistol from the center console and fired several warning shots at her son while moving toward him as he was approaching. She said she moved in closer and fired another shot, striking her son in the upper left side of his chest and through his body killing him. She said she did not mean to kill him and that it was supposed to be a warning shot which was meant to scare him into stopping. Crime scene evidence showed that Tabitha moved 18 feet toward Brandon after getting the gun and firing and then another 42 feet toward him before shooting the final shot. She was less than 20 feet away when she shot him. On Monday the 5th of June, Tabitha was arrested and charged with second degree murder and was released after posting a $25,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A 21 year old man is behind bars for fatally shooting a 31 year old man during an argument. At around 3.30 a.m. on Monday the 12th of June, authorities responded to the Loha Backyard Bar located at 3125 South Bryant Avenue in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on reports of a shooting. When officers arrived, they found 31-year-old Justin Smith lifeless with multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators said that it appears that he and 21-year-old Jonathan Thomas were involved in an argument with one another which resulted in Jonathan shooting Justin. Police said Jonathan remained on scene and was arrested. He's been charged with first degree murder and he's held at the Oklahoma County Jail without bond. It's unclear what the argument was about. Justin is survived by his two children aged 5 and 10. The investigation into the matter continues. Authorities are investigating after a 24 year old man was found fatally shot. At 10.04am on Tuesday the 13th of June, Police responded to a home at 1242 Western Street in North Augusta, South Carolina on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived, they found Carnell Nillis III deceased in an open doorway of his home with gunshot wounds. Investigators said that a white or grey hatchback was seen leaving the scene in a hurry after the shooting. Authorities have not made any arrests to date and are urging anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Carnell has previously been arrested in 2017 for firearm trespass assault and battery offences. The investigation into the matter continues. 21 year old Chloe Wisniewski was arrested last week after a pit bull puppy gnawed on the infant's hand while she was in the shower, biting off five of her fingers early this year. On the morning of the 14th of February, Chloe left her baby daughter in the same room as a three month old puppy. It was brought into a home at 23399 Abrad Avenue in Port Charlotte, Florida less than 24 hours earlier. Chloe told investigators that she was feeling ill and put the little girl in a bassinet before heading to the bathroom. She said she turned on the shower and turned it off again when she heard the baby girl scream. She came running out of the bathroom and saw the dog laying in the bassinet with the child, chewing on the baby's hands. Chloe told police there was so much blood that she couldn't look at her daughter's fingers. She wrapped the baby's hands in cloth and called 911 and the infant was rushed to hospital. Doctors had no choice but to fully amputate three fingers on the child's left hand and partially amputate two fingers on the right hand. On Friday the 16th of June, after a four month investigation, authorities arrested and charged Chloe with child neglect. Investigators said the mother kept changing stories as to why she left the baby alone with the pit bull. She was held at the Charlotte County Jail but was released on Monday the 19th of June after posting a $7,500 bond. As the baby recovers with family members, Chloe was granted supervised visitation. The puppy named Apollo was quarantined as part of the protocol following a bite. He passed the quarantine and was transferred to the Animal Welfare League. 25 year old Kaylee Ann Louise Bang is behind bars after being accused of setting fire to a home that she knew had people inside. At 5.39 a.m. on the 11th of June, Kaylee sent fire to a house at 951 16th Street Northeast in Mason City, Iowa. Authorities said that Kaylee set items on fire in a bedroom when she knew her mother and two other people were inside the home. She made no attempt to extinguish the fire and then tried to prevent a neighbor from putting the fire out. Law enforcement described the home as a total loss. On Friday the 16th of June, Kaylee was arrested and booked into the Cerro Gorda County Jail on separate charges of public intoxication and violation of probation. She's now charged with first degree arson. She's been held on a $25,000 bond. If convicted on the first degree arson charge, she faces up to 25 years behind bars. A woman has been charged with murder after leaving a 16 month old daughter alone for more than a week while she vacationed. 
On the morning of Friday the 16th of June, 31-year-old Crystal Candelario found her daughter Jalen unresponsive at the home on West 97th Street in Cleveland, Ohio, and 911 was called. First responders pronounced Jalen dead at the scene, and investigators noted that she was extremely dehydrated. While questioned, Crystal told detectives that she admitted to going to Puerto Rico and Detroit for a total of eight days, while leaving Jalen alone and without any care inside the house. Officials also observed Jalen's play pen pack with saw blankets and a bottom liner, saturated with urine and feces. Neighbor Suleen Gonzalez said that the baby's grandmother usually cared for the baby, not the mother. The baby's mother always wanted to go out, and left her with her grandmother and all that, she said. Crystal was arrested on Sunday the 18th of June, and appeared in court for arraignment on Tuesday the 20th of June. She's held at the Cuyahoga County Jail on a $1 million bond. Her next court appearance is scheduled for a pre-trial hearing on the 28th of June. The investigation into the matter continues. A 24-year-old man is behind bars, and is accused of fatally shooting two people. At 8.28pm on Monday the 19th of June, authorities responded to a call of a shooting near Main and Bridge Streets in Westbrook, Maine, and saw a man firing at a woman in a parking lot. Officers discovered 37-year-old Brittany Cockerell and 41-year-old Michael Hayter deceased in a vehicle with their 11-year-old son and 7-year-old daughter in the back. The children witnessed the shooting, but police said they were not injured. A man working at a nearby market took the children out of the car so they wouldn't have to see the parents' bodies. The suspect, 24-year-old Marcel Lagrange Jr., ran from the scene and physically assaulted a bystander while fleeing. Authorities identified that victim as 75-year-old Fred Rorke and said he went to hospital with minor injuries. Witnesses nearby tackled Marcel and took his gun away until police arrived and arrested him. The medical examiners determined Michael and Brittany died of gunshot wounds and their deaths were deemed a homicide. Marcel was charged with two counts of murder and he's held at the Cumberland County Jail without bond. Investigators said there's no known connection between the victims and Marcel and the motive of the attack is unclear. Marcel has a criminal history dating back to 2018 with charges of terrorizing, assault, domestic violence and other crimes. Just days prior to the shooting, a woman who met Marcel said he showed up to her house and threatened to kill her. The woman called authorities and pressed charges. She said she quickly realized that Marcel was a very dangerous person and not to have any contact with him. The investigation into the matter continues. 55-year-old Donald Shaver Jr. is behind bars after he tried to kill his pregnant girlfriend with an axe. At 11.28pm on Saturday the 24th of June, authorities responded to a home along Old Cross Road in Bell County, Kentucky on a report of a domestic violence incident. When deputies arrived at the scene, they came in contact with a female victim. She said that Donald placed his hand around her throat, knocking her backward out of the chair, causing the back of her head to hit the ground and proceeded to strangle her. The woman said she was able to break free from Donald and get to her feet when Donald swung an axe at her stomach while she was 13 weeks pregnant with their child. Deputies found Donald sitting in the back of a pickup truck on the property and detected a strong odour of alcohol coming from his breath. Donald was arrested and charged with assault, strangulation, attempted murder, attempted fetal homicide and public intoxication. He's out of the Bell County Detention Centre. The victim's condition is unknown at this time. 76-year-old girl DeAnthony is behind bars for fatally beating her 72-year-old husband, John DeAnthony, early this year. At 7.38pm on the 1st of March, medics responded to a home at 334 Roy Road in Westminster, Maryland on a report of a man in cardiac arrest. When medics arrived at the property, they went inside the premises and attempted life-saving measures on John, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. The medical examiner's office determined that John has sustained blunt force trauma all over his body, lacerations to his mouth, a broken neck, rib, two black eyes and contusions. His death was ruled a homicide. The Carroll County Sheriff's Office Major Crimes Unit assumed the investigation on the 24th of May and found evidence of blood splatter in the Roy home, consistent with the victim's blunt force trauma injuries. In June, Major Crime Unit detectives became aware that Gail told a witness that she killed John by pushing him to the ground, where he hit his head on the floor. She said that she then left the room and returned with a cane, which she used to bludgeon John on the head, and then used the cane to prevent him from getting up. Gail said she entered and exited the room several times, eventually finding her husband unresponsive before calling 911 for help. Authorities found the witness's statement consistent with the evidence found at the scene. 
On Wednesday the 21st of June, detectives arrested Gail in Cumberland, Maryland on charges of first and second degree murder. She remains held without bail at the Allegheny County Jail and will be transported to the Carroll County Detention Center. The motive in the attack is unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. 56-year-old Ronald Burdett has pleaded guilty this week to killing his wife last year and shooting his 11-year-old daughter in the neck. Ronald entered the plea on Monday the 26th of June to the charges of murder, assault and wanton endangerment for fatally shooting his wife Cindy Burdett and seriously wounding his daughter. Ronald also shot at his son, but he wasn't hit. The shooting occurred at 4.50am on the 15th of May 2022 when Ronald shot Cindy inside their home at 2107 Appleton Lane in Shively, Kentucky. The 11-year-old girl and her twin brother called a relative and told them that Ronald shot their mother and was still opening fire inside the house. Ronald fled after the shooting in a 2007 Ford Taurus but was arrested the following day in Jeffersonville and then extradited back to Jefferson County. Prosecutors have recommended a sentence of 25 years in prison. His sentencing hearing is scheduled for the 17th of August. A 60-year-old woman was arrested for fatally shooting her boyfriend before taking her own life in jail. At around 12.40pm on Thursday the 22nd of June, authorities were called to a residence in the 3000 block of Appaloosa Drive in Lake Havasu City, Arizona on report of a shooting. The caller, later identified as Julia Pete, told dispatch that she had shot a man in her home. When officers arrived at the scene, they found 69-year-old Mark Corbett, deceased with multiple gunshot wounds. Julia told detectives that she was dating the man and became fearful of her safety after learning of some alleged criminal history involving the man. Upon further investigation, detectives determined that the man had not threatened Julia, nor had he attempted to harm her at the time of the shooting. Julia was arrested and charged with first-degree homicide, and she was booked into the Mojave County Adult Detention Center. On Friday the 23rd of June, her bond was set at $1 million. At 2.34pm on Sunday the 25th of June, Julie was found unresponsive in a cell, with clothing tied around her neck. Officials said she took her own life. Julie was housed alone at the jail, and no foul play is suspected. The investigation into the matter continues. A couple behind bars in connection with the death of the eight-month-old infant son, who died of an overdose last year. On the morning of the 15th of November, Medics responded to a home in the 1600 block of Broadmoor Circle in Boulder City, Nevada, on report of an unresponsive baby. When first responders arrived at the scene, they attempted life-saving measures before transporting the child to St. Rose Siena Hospital, where the infant was pronounced dead at 9.31am. The Clark County Coroner's Office determined the child died as a result of fentanyl toxicity, and he had suffered recent meth exposure. Police spoke with the child's parents, 36-year-old Jeffrey Terakami and 31-year-old Cara Dugan who both said the child had been exposed to meth and fentanyl after Jeffrey spilled a bag mixed with the drugs on their bed. The child then allegedly crawled onto the bed following the spill. On the 16th of June, the couple were booked into the Clark County Detention Centre, charged with second-degree murder. Their bond has been set at $20,000 each. A 53-year-old man is behind bars after leaving his five grandchildren home alone all day without food or air conditioning during a very hot day. At 3.54am on Monday the 19th of June, authorities performed a welfare check at a home along the 17,400 block of Rolling Creek Drive in Houston, Texas. Investigators said they discovered that Kevin Turner left five children, aged between 9 and 16 years old, in the home without food, air conditioning and adult supervision on a day with very high temperatures of over 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Harris County Precinct 4 Constable Mark Herman said, a couple of them went to a local food store and were caught stealing food inside the store. He said that the children were forbidden from running the air conditioning unless their grandfather was there and the house was infested with roaches and was just trashy inside, he said. The children were home alone for 24 hours before officials arrived and transported them to a local hospital for treatment. Following medical treatment, Child Protective Services took custody of the children. Authorities said that Kevin is the children's grandfather but had custody of his daughter's children. During the investigation, Kevin showed up at the house and deputies took him into custody. He was booked into the Harris County Jail on a charge of child abandonment and his bond was set at $10,000. Authorities said that further charges are possible as the investigation into the matter continues. A 
authorities are investigating after a 39-year-old woman was found fatally shot inside her Long Island home on Monday night. At 9.41pm on the 19th of June, authorities responded to apartment number 380 along 117 Hawthorne Avenue in Central Islip, New York, after a family member reported finding Shana stat and unresponsive. Authorities said she was found stuck between a bed and the wall, with several gunshot wounds throughout her body, and she was pronounced dead at the scene. It's not immediately clear what events led up to the shooting. Investigators have not named any suspects or made any arrests as the investigation into the matter continues. 25-year-old Dustin Mason was taken into custody this week in connection to the death of his five-week-old son who died last year. On the 28th of October, authorities responded to a home at 549 Mustang Lane in Poplar Bluff, Missouri on a report that an infant had turned blue and was unresponsive. First responders arrived at the residence and performed life-saving measures on the child before transporting him to the hospital. Doctors reported injuries on the baby associated with abusive head trauma. The child was placed on life support but later died. Dustin told investigators that he was home alone with the infant and his two other children while his wife was out getting pizza. He said he put the baby in his infant swing and propped his bottle with a blanket while he ran to use the bathroom. While in the restroom, he said he heard choking noises and ran to the infant who was choking on formula. He said he tried again to stop choking, but the baby started turning blue. An autopsy was conducted on the 3rd of November, and a report from a pathologist who specialises in child abuse deaths came back in April. It was determined that the infant died as a result of complications due to closed head injuries that occurred over a period of time. These injuries were not consistent with choking on formula, and the child's death was ruled a homicide. On Tuesday the 20th of June, Dustin was arrested and charged with abuse or neglect of a child resulting in death. He's out of the Butler County Jail without bond. 47-year-old Kelly Watford and 52-year-old Mark Watford were arrested last week after their malnourished six-year-old son drowned inside their home. On Wednesday the 14th of June, authorities responded to a home on the 2200 block of Core Drive in Auburn, Alabama where they found a child identified as Sullivan Watford unresponsive and not breathing. Medics performed life-saving measures before transporting the boy to East Alabama Health, where he was pronounced dead. Upon further investigation, police learned of suspicious circumstances surrounding Sullivan's death and collected evidence that signaled to a possible drowning. Investigators said that Sullivan weighed 21 pounds and appeared to be extremely malnourished at the time of his death. Due to his low weight, authorities said it was unlikely Sullivan was able to walk or sit up on his own. Additional evidence was discovered that showed the child had sustained prolonged willful abuse and maltreatment. Kelly told investigators that she gave her son vapor rub to treat his cough, but she never used that kind before. She said she was bathing her son when he became unresponsive, and that he must have died from an allergic reaction. But an autopsy revealed water in his navel cavity and lungs, which is consistent with drowning. Police took his parents Mark and Kelly into custody. Kelly was charged with felony murder, while Mark was charged with aggravated child abuse. Mark's bond was set at $30,000, and Kelly remains held without bond. At a hearing on Wednesday the 21st of June, Judge Russell Bush saw pictures of the victim taken by Auburn police, and said they were nothing like he's ever seen outside the Holocaust documentaries. The parents homeschooled their seven children, and the victim had never seen a paediatrician. The investigation into the matter continues. 29-year-old Nicole Marie Labour is behind bars, and is accused of letting an infant in her care drown in a bathtub, and then lying to investigators on how it happened. At around 7.40am on Saturday the 17th of June, authorities responded to Nicole's home at 1321 Everglades Boulevard South, in Naples, Florida, on reports of an unresponsive infant. When first responders arrived, they attempted life-saving measures on the baby, but was later pronounced dead. Nicole told deputies that she briefly left the infant inside the house unattended while she went to retrieve her dog and another child who were in their care after they went outside the front door. When she returned, she said she found the infant slumped over the floor, face down in the dog's water bowl. During the investigation, detectives learned that Nicole left the infant unattended in the bathtub while strapped to a booster seat. The infant drowned after the booster seat tipped over and trapped the child under a few inches of water. Nicole was accused of cleaning up the scene dressing the child in a diaper and saying the baby drowned in the dog's water bowl. Nicole was arrested and charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child and is held at the Collier County Jail. 
A man is behind bars for fatally shooting a man inside his home early Wednesday morning. At 12.07am on the 21st of June, authorities responded to a residence in the 1600 block of Eastway Drive in Dallas, North Carolina on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they went inside the premises and found 25-year-old Christopher Knox weary with multiple gunshot wounds. He was transported to the Caramont Regional Medical Center, where he died shortly thereafter. Officers arrested 24-year-old Nicholas Max Talent, who lived at the home in connection to the shooting. Authorities said that Christopher and a friend were at Nicholas's home. When Christopher was ready to go, he called his mother to pick him up. Sometime after that call, Nicholas fired six shots through his bedroom door. Three of those shots fatally struck Christopher. The motive in the shooting is unclear. Nicholas is charged with second-degree murder and was being held at the Gaston County Jail, but was released after posting a $500,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. 28-year-old Tiana Johnson has been charged in connection to the death of a toddler early this year. At 7.15am on the 22nd of January, authorities responded to an apartment in the 700 block of Blue Street in Fateville, North Carolina, on reports of an unresponsive child. First responders entered the residence and attempted life-saving measures on the girl, However, the child was pronounced dead at the scene and her death was ruled a homicide. Authorities have not disclosed the events leading up to the girl's death. Police said that the child and Tiana were related, but did not specify their exact relationship. However, police said that Tiana lived in the same apartment complex. On Friday the 23rd of June, Tiana was arrested and charged with second degree murder and felony child abuse and is held at the Cumberland County Detention Centre. A couple were arrested on Friday the 23rd of June in connection to the death of their infant daughter last month. At 5.12pm on the 31st of May, deputies responded to a home located near Interstate 75 and B Ridge Road in Sarasota County, Florida in reference to the death of an eight-month-old child. The child had been found unresponsive and cold to touch and was transported to the doctor's hospital by the child's father, Nicholas Alexander and a friend who drove him there. Deputies determined that the child had been in the care of Carissa Alexander, the child's mother, when the child was observed face down on the couch cushions inside the residence. Further investigation determined that the child had not been checked on from 10.30am to approximately 4.45pm when Nicholas returned home from work later that day. The child had been dead for several hours and it was confirmed that the child died from exposure to fentanyl. Nicholas and Chris were each charged with aggravated manslaughter of the child and are being held without bond at the Sarasota Correctional Facility. A man is behind bars after using a drone to spy on a woman while she was preparing to take a shower. At around 11pm on Wednesday the 21st of June, authorities responded to a home along Midland Drive in Cranston, Rhode Island, where a woman reported a drone peering into a bathroom window. She said she had just returned home from work and was preparing to use the shower. Her bathroom window was slightly ajar, and she said she heard a buzzing noise and went out to her backyard, thinking it had something to do with her pool. Once outside, she noticed the drone hovering outside a bathroom window. When she approached the drone, it quickly moved away from her, hit a tree branch and crashed to the ground. She grabbed the drone and submerged it into her pool to disable it, and handed it over to police. Investigators later tracked the drone to Christopher Jones, a convicted sex offender. He has not had to register since his requirement ended in 2015. Christopher admitted he operated the drone. On Friday the 23rd of June, Christopher was arrested and charged with video voyeurism. Three police officers have been charged with murder after fatally shooting a woman inside her apartment during a mental health crisis. In the very early morning hours of Friday the 23rd of June, authorities responded to an apartment complex in the 6200 block of Old Pearsall Road in San Antonio, Texas on reports of a disturbance and vandalism. Investigators said that a woman identified as 46-year-old Melissa Perez was behaving erratically, destroying things in her apartment and cutting through wires of a fire alarm system of the apartment complex. When officers arrived, they located Melissa in the parking lot and tried to talk to her, but she ran back to her apartment and locked herself in. She then reached for a glass candle and threw it at the officers. One group of officers was at the front of the apartment and three officers were stationed at the back patio of the apartment, identified as Alfred Flores, Eleazar Alejandro, and Nathaniel Villalobos. The three officers tried to coax Melissa out of the apartment, but she refused. 
Soon after, two of the officers jumped the railings and got onto the patio. Melissa then picked up a hammer, then swung the hammer from inside the apartment towards the officers and hit the window breaking it. One of the officers fired his weapon at Melissa, but it didn't appear that she was struck. Melissa went toward the window again, while still armed with the hammer, and all three officers opened fire, and she was struck by gun for at least two times. After the shooting, officers forced their way into the apartment and provided medical aid until medics arrived. Melissa died at the scene from her injuries. After reviewing body cam footage, the three officers were taken into custody late Friday and charged with murder. Their bonds were set at $100,000 each. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus said that the shooting officers' actions were not consistent with San Antonio Police Department policy and training. They placed themselves in a situation where they used deadly force, which was not reasonable given all the circumstances, he said. The officers were all released the following morning after posting bond pending trial. The investigation into the matter continues. Authorities are investigating after a man was found fatally shot early Saturday morning. At around 4am on the 24th of June, police responded to Cordell Circle in Jacksonville, North Carolina, on reports of a person down. When officers arrived, they located a man laying on the roadway between Waffle House and Goodfellas Bar and Lounge, in a critical condition suffering from a gunshot wound. Medics arrived and attempted life-saving measures and transported him to a local hospital, where he later succumbed to his injuries. The victim was identified as 44-year-old Andre Markel Lewis, and his death was ruled a homicide. Investigators believe that this was an isolated incident. Police have not released a motive or made any arrests in the case, as the investigation into the matter continues. A teenager is behind bars and is accused of fatally stabbing a man over the weekend. At around 7.30am on Sunday the 25th of June, Authorities responded to a home along the 900 block of Summer Breeze Drive in Brandon, Florida and found a man inside a residence with upper body trauma. The victim was transported to Brandon Regional Hospital, where he later died. Officers located 17-year-old Caleb Beck near the scene, who was identified as a suspect. Authorities said that Caleb admitted to stabbing the unidentified victim during a heated argument, however it's unclear what the argument was about. Caleb was arrested and charged with murder in the second degree with a weapon and he's held at the Hillsborough County Jail. The investigation into the matter continues. 28-year-old Crystal Vera is behind bars after abandoning her malnourished eight-year-old son at the home early this month. Crystal left her son by himself while she left to hang out with her boyfriend. On the 8th of June, the boy broke into a nearby stranger's house located along Petrus Road in Hullingen, Texas to steal food. The Cameron County Sheriff's Office was notified about the child after the homeowners found the boy digging through their refrigerator and eating their food. The homeowners said he was holding food in his hands and said that he was hungry. The homeowners said they did not know the boy. Police said the young boy was observed to be skinny, seemed very weak and malnourished. The homeowners took the boy back to his home in an attempt to return him to his mother, but she was not home. After some time, the mother arrived back at her residence with a boyfriend and she admitted to police that she left the boy unattended and home alone. The boy has since been removed from the home by Child Protective Services. On the 20th of June, after gathering enough evidence, Crystal was arrested and charged with abandonment and endangerment of a child with imminent bodily injury. She's held at the Cameron County Jail on a $20,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A 32-year-old man is behind bars after fatally stabbing the mother of his children over the weekend. At around 3pm on Sunday the 25th of June, authorities responded to an apartment at 16 Natividad Road in Salinas, California on report of a stabbing. When officers arrived, they went inside the residence and found 30-year-old Eleni Tavu unresponsive with multiple stab wounds. Two of her children, a one-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy were found nearby. Officers attempted life-saving measures on Eleni before transporting her to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. Investigators interviewed witnesses, followed up on leads, and discovered that Eleni had a restraining order against Rodrigo Bravo, the father of Eleni's young children. At around 5.30pm, Rodrigo turned himself in at the Salinas Police Department and confessed to the killing. Eleni's younger brother Alex Carr said they spoke on the phone just prior to the stabbing, and she told him that she was done with Rodrigo. She said that she wanted to move to Reno, Nevada to be with him and to bring her kids there. Rodrigo is charged with murder, violation of probation, 
and violation of a domestic violence restraining order. He's also charged with child endangerment because the toddlers were at home with their mother when she was slain. He's held the Monterey County Jail with his bond set at $1 million. Eleni's family says she leaves behind three children. The investigation into the matter continues. Nineteen-year-old Ashley Marie Barnes is behind bars for beating family members, which included her mother and eleven-year-old girl. At just after 8pm on Saturday the 17th of June, authorities responded to a home off West 32nd Street in Muncie, Indiana on reports of a domestic battery incident. Police said that 11-year-old girl and other witnesses told officers that Ashley had slapped her in the face, punched her body and put both hands around her neck. Investigators noted that the girl had marks on her neck and face, and she was taken to a local hospital for treatment. Ashley's mother told investigators that when she tried to separate Ashley and the 11-year-old girl, she had her hair pulled. She was pushed and she was hit in the back of the head. Officers took pictures of the mother's wounds to document her injuries. Officers also observed she had scrapes on her legs and her fingers were bleeding. Another family member also said Ashley struck him in the face while he tried to stop her violent altercation, but stated he didn't want charges filed. There were several children present in the home during the fight with Ashley along with her 11-year-old girl. They included a 12-year-old girl and four boys aged 17, 10, 9 and 7 years old. Ashley was arrested and charged with battery resulting in bodily injury and strangulation, and she was booked into the Delaware County Jail. The investigation into the matter continues. Forty-five-year-old Loretta K. Carr was arrested on Sunday the 25th of June and charged with capital murder and kidnapping in connection with the death of 37-year-old Mary Elizabeth Isbell of Fort Payne, Alabama. Larissa is accused of intentionally causing Mary's death by pushing her off of a cliff in October of 2021 after an attempted abduction or during an abduction. Mary had been reported missing by the Hartsell Police Department and the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office in January of 2022, saying she had family in Hartsell, but was also known to live in DeKalb County. Prior to her disappearance, she was allegedly involved in some sort of theft in an apartment she lived in with her boyfriend, identified as James Allen Wright. James eventually transferred to a rehabilitation center in Florida, while Mary began living where she could in DeKalb County, Alabama. Namus, the missing persons organization, said that Mary moved out of her Fort Payne residence on the 11th of October 2021 and hadn't been seen since. Authorities said she was driving a dark-colored Jeep. Police have not elaborated on Loretta's possible motive or how the two women knew each other and have released a few details on the case. Loretta remains held at the DeKalb County Jail without bond as the investigation into the matter continues. 64-year-old Charles Ray Johnson is behind bars after fatally shooting his next-door neighbours 44-year-old Curtis Ray Dickey Jr. and 46-year-old Kelly Nicole Adams. At 10.01pm on Wednesday the 21st of June, authorities received multiple calls of a shooting outside an apartment complex along the 1800 block of Potomac Place in College Station, Texas. One of the calls came from Charles himself, who told dispatch that he shot two people from his front porch. Upon arriving at the scene, police said that Charles was found in the parking lot and he was taken into custody after telling police he had no choice but to shoot and it was done in self-defense. Curtis was found deceased on the front porch and Kelly was found deceased at the threshold of their apartment. After being taken into custody, Charles admitted to shooting both Curtis and Kelly following a verbal altercation regarding the tampering of Charles's moped. Charles explained that there had been ongoing harassment issues between himself, Curtis and Kelly. Charles told police that after arriving at his apartment, Curtis and Kelly began banging on his door. Charles said he grabbed his gun and went outside to confront them. Authorities said that a witness saw Charles exiting his apartment and yelling at Curtis and accusing him of tampering with his moped. A witness said that Curtis denied the allegations, at which point Charles opened fire on Curtis and then shot Kelly as she attempted to run back to her apartment. Charles is charged with two counts of murder and is held at the Brazos County Detention Center on a $800,000 bond. A 51-year-old man was arrested last week for kidnapping a woman, holding her captive in a trailer and sexually assaulting her over several days in May. On Tuesday the 13th of June, Authorities arrested Christopher Lee Ward at his residence along the 500 block of New Center Road in Hartsell, Alabama for first-degree kidnapping and second-degree assault, and additional charges are possible. A woman needed Christopher to take her to an appointment, 
and he drove her back to his trailer afterward and locked her in. Christopher told her that she ruined his day, then hit her several times injuring her. He then used the padlock to keep her in the trailer and refused to let her leave. He reportedly sexually assaulted the victim as well. The victim told police that on the second night of captivity, Christopher had taken a shot of dope which in turn made him paranoid. A woman told police that Christopher punched her, kicked her, kneed her in the ribs, choked her, and beat her severely. Christopher said he'll kill her before he went to prison for this. The victim eventually managed to escape when she and Christopher got into his car, but then he stopped to say hi to someone he knew. She said she got out of the car and ran to safety when she asked someone to call 911 for her. Christopher is currently being held at the Morgan County Jail without bond. A 58-year-old man is behind bars after fatally shooting his neighbour earlier this week. At just before 11pm on Tuesday the 20th of June, authorities were called to a home along Chain Street in Sumter, South Carolina regarding a man laying unresponsive in the front yard of a residence. When officers arrived, they found 46-year-old Levin Wilson deceased from gunshot wounds. Upon further investigation, police identified George Gregory Anderson as a suspect. Authorities said it remains unclear what led to the shooting. It's reported that the men were not acquainted, and there was no indication of a dispute before the incident. George is held at the Sumter County Detention Centre on charges of murder and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. George was also served with an outstanding bench warrant unrelated to the case. The investigation into the matter continues. 26-year-old Hunter Tatum will avoid the death penalty after he pleaded guilty to fatally shooting his wife Summer Tatum and the couple's unborn son during his capital murder trial. On Wednesday the 21st of June, Hunter entered a plea arrangement for two counts of murder and a judge sentenced him to 198 years in prison. At just before midnight on the 18th of October 2021, Hunter shot Summer, who was five months pregnant at their home, on Sunset Court in Prattville, Alabama. Prosecutors argued that Hunter killed Summer because she was angry that he had developed an online relationship with a woman in England. Hunter's defense team alleged Summer threatened Hunter with a gun and told him you don't deserve to live and I'm going to kill you. Security camera footage, however, captured Summer pleading with Hunter outside their home. Please, 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 I'll stay. I'll do anything. Don't kill me. Hunter said nope several times before shooting his wife twice in the back of the head with a revolver. Minix rushed an unresponsive summer to Montgomery Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Doctors delivered baby Everett via emergency C-section, and he survived for about two hours before dying. Prosecutors sought the death penalty, but Summer's family approved of the plea deal. In his statement, District Attorney C.J. Robinson said the case took a toll on all of us. A 23-year-old man is behind bars after fatally shooting a 23-year-old man and injuring his 21-year-old estranged girlfriend over the weekend. On Saturday the 24th of June, authorities responded to a residence along State Road 100 Keystone Heights, Florida, on reports of a shooting. When Clay County deputies arrived at the scene, they found a male victim unresponsive in the driveway suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Medics attempted life-saving measures on the man, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators also located a female victim with a gunshot wound and transported her to a local hospital to treat her injuries. The female victim identified the shooter as her estranged boyfriend John Thornton, but he fled the scene before deputies arrived. The Clay County Sheriff's Office notified law enforcement agencies about the suspect's vehicle, and officials from the Bradford County Sheriff's Department later located John's car and took him into custody. The investigators said the two victims would occasionally allow John to stay in their home, he and the female victim were reportedly strange because of domestic violence. Authorities said that on the day of the shooting, John arrived uninvited, and the two victims ordered him to leave. When John tried to enter the home again, he allegedly pulled out a gun and shot his estranged girlfriend and the male victim. John was booked into the Clay County Jail on charges of second-degree murder and second-degree attempted murder. He remains held without bond and is scheduled to appear in court on the 24th of July. Sheriff Michelle Cook said the victims were trying to help a friend, and sadly became the target of the suspect. The investigation into the matter continues. A 26-year-old man is behind bars for fatally shooting his newborn daughter with a crossbow and injuring his 31-year-old wife. At 5.14am on Monday the 26th of June, authorities responded to a residence along State Route 41 near Cass Road in Colesville, New York on report of an adult female and an infant who had been shot with a crossbow. When medics arrived, they pronounced the infant dead at the scene. 
Well, the woman was transported to hospital. Investigators learnt that Patrick Daniel Profee got into a dispute with his wife and fired a crossbow at her while she was holding their three-week-old daughter. The crossbow reportedly struck the infant in the torso, exiting near the armpit and then hit the woman in the chest. Authorities said that Patrick removed the arrow and tried to stop his wife from calling law enforcement. He then fled the home in his 2016 Dodge Ram pickup truck before deputies arrived at the scene. Deputies from the Broome County Sheriff's Office created a perimeter in the area and began searching for Patrick with the assistance of the New York State Police and the Chenango County Sheriff's Office. Investigators located Patrick less than a mile away from his home in a wooded area after his vehicle got stuck in the mud. Deputies arrested Patrick and charged him with second degree murder, second degree attempted murder and first degree criminal contempt. He's been held at the Broome County Jail without bail. Authorities said that Patrick has an active stay away order of protection and a long history of domestic violence. Broom County Sheriff Fred Aksha called the case one of the most heartbreaking and senseless crimes. He said having a newborn child should be the greatest thing in life. It should not push you to commit homicide. And that's exactly what Patrick did. The woman's condition is currently unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. At 3.45am on Monday the 26th of June, authorities arrested 39-year-old Jamie Schnackenberg at his home along School Street in Monticello, Maine for the murder of his living girlfriend, 42-year-old Kimberly Hardy. Kimberly was reported missing on Sunday the 18th of June by her mother after she had not seen or heard from her daughter since Friday the 16th of June and an extensive search for her began. Authorities said that Kimberly was undergoing cancer treatments, which was supposed to be ongoing. The search for Kimberly led investigators to a wooded area around Harvey Siding Road, where a body believed to be that of Kimberly was found. The chief medical examiner in Augusta will confirm the victim's identity and cause of death. Kimberly and Jamie have been in a relationship since February of 2022. Jamie remains held at the Aristotle County Jail as the investigation into the matter continues. Police have arrested 19-year-old Enrique Padilla for fatally shooting 52-year-old Michael Tenorio in a movie theatre after getting into a fight over reserved seats. At around 9pm on Sunday the 25th of June, authorities responded to multiple reports of shots fired at the Century Rio movie theatre on Pan America Freeway in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Enrique and Michael were at the theatre seeing no hard feelings. Michael and his wife were reportedly sitting in the seats that Enrique and his girlfriend reserved. Enrique confronted Michael and a theatre employee tried to break it up. Enrique then threw a bucket of popcorn at the couple. Michael and Enrique then started fighting. Authorities said that Enrique fired several shots, struck Michael and fled the scene. An off-duty officer who was at the theatre during the shooting performed CPR on Michael. However, he died at the scene. Police found Enrique hiding in the bush near the theatre's emergency exit and he was taken to University New Mexico Hospital and treated for a gunshot wound to his stomach. When Enrique was questioned, he said he was shot inside the movie theatre, but he was unsure who shot him. Witnesses in the theatre said they saw a green laser prior to the shooting, and police later discovered a gun with a laser in the bushes where Enrique emerged from. Enrique has been arrested and charged with open murder, shooting at a dwelling or occupied building, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and tampering with evidence. The investigation into the matter continues. Thirty-two-year-old Austin Green Urich is behind bars for fatally beating his mother. At 7.26pm on Thursday, the 22nd of June, authorities responded to the Hacienda apartment complex in the 1300 block of Northeast 68th Avenue in Portland, Oregon, on a report of an assault. When officers arrived at the scene, they entered the apartment and located 64-year-old Kathy Green with serious life-threatening injuries, and she was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Investigators identified the victim's son as a suspect, who remained on scene and cooperated with officers. He told authorities that he hit his mother in the head with a baseball bat, stating that he was tired of the way his mother treated him, and so he struck her. He was booked into the Multnomah County Detention Centre on charges of attempted murder, domestic violence and unlawful use of a weapon. Kathy died from her injuries two days later in hospital. Following her death, Austin's attempted murder charge was upgraded to murder. The investigation into the matter continues. 35-year-old Jessica Deidre Edward Ricks is accused of attempting to drown a two-year-old daughter in a bathtub. The mother of four is also accused of stabbing the toddler as well as a four-year-old son 
and forcing them to ingest toxic cleaning liquid. At around 10.30pm on Saturday the 24th of June, authorities responded to a 911 call at her home along Blue Stem Court in Albion, Michigan, after Jessica's 15-year-old daughter could be heard screaming for help. When officers arrived, they entered the home and heard a commotion coming from behind a locked door to the bathroom. An officer kicked the door open and found Jessica hunched over a bathtub, holding her two-year-old daughter who had a stab wound to her chest and throat underwater. The officer quickly grabbed the girl from the woman and took her into the living room and began CPR. After giving a few quick breaths, her child coughed up water and began breathing on her own. Her four-year-old brother also had multiple slash wounds. Police said that the four-year-old boy and the two-year-old girl were also believed to have swallowed cleaner fluid, and both were transported to a local hospital. They later airlifted to a children's hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan for more specialised care, and both are recovering. Two other children ages 8 and 15 were also found in the house. Neither appeared to have suffered any injuries. Jessica was taken into custody and charged with two counts of assault with intent to murder four counts of child abuse and one count of simple assault. She's been held in the Calhoun County Correctional Facility on a $500,000 bond. Jessica appeared in court on Tuesday the 27th of June and pleaded not guilty to the charges. She's been ordered to undergo a mental health assessment and is due to return to court on the 11th of July. If convicted of the charges, Jessica faces up to life in prison. The investigation into the matter continues. On Wednesday the 28th of June, 37-year-old Carlton Dudley was arrested just days after his wife's body was found at a lake. Carlton has been charged with abuse of a corpse in connection with his wife's death. 32-year-old Sarah Dudley was reported missing on Saturday the 24th of June, but her body was found two days later along the shore of Lake Louisville, near a camping area by visitors to Hidden Cove Park in Frisco, Texas. Carlton told police he spent time with his wife early Saturday afternoon and then left to go to a friend's house to take care of a cat. When he returned at around 4pm, he said his wife was gone, and assumed that she had gone to work in Plano, Texas, roughly 15 miles away from Hidden Cove Park. He told investigators he took his coke to Hidden Cove on Louisville Lake, but couldn't inflate it. Police said that he told him that he couldn't get his coke to blow up, it's a soft kayak, so he just stayed at the marina for a while and walked around. After Sarah's body was found, Investigators learnt that the husband was required to wear an ankle monitor as part of bond conditions for an aggravated sexual assault case against a child in Frisco, Texas in September of 2022. When detectives looked at the data from his monitor, they found that he was not just on the shore, but he was out on the water somewhere. Investigators gathered enough evidence to arrest him on abuse of a corpse charge. Authorities said that more charges are possible after an autopsy is completed. Carlton and Sarah lived in an apartment in Plano, Texas, and have reportedly been together for 10 years. Carlton is being held at the Collin County Jail on a $560,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A 40-year-old man is behind bars after fatally shooting his 35-year-old friend over an argument about a $20 gaming voucher. At 12.37pm on Sunday the 11th of June, Authorities responded to a report of an unresponsive man in a hotel room at the Excalibur Hotel and Casino at 3850 South Las Vegas Boulevard in Las Vegas, Nevada. Investigators said that a housekeeper at the hotel noticed a blood stain coming out of a door, and when she opened it, she saw Martel Merrill's body and immediately called hotel security, who then contacted police. When officers arrived at the scene, they found the man suffering from a gunshot wound, and medical personnel pronounced him dead at the scene. Authorities said that Christopher Mason checked into the room on Tuesday the 6th of June and was staying with Martell and another person. Detectives learnt that on the night of Saturday the 10th of June, security called 911 after a woman reported that a man she knew as Queez held a gun to her boyfriend's head. The woman said her boyfriend Martell was talking to her on the phone when he got into a confrontation with another person over a $20 gaming voucher. She said she heard a thud and then laboured breathing, but she gave security the incorrect room number. Detectives reviewed surveillance footage and saw Christopher get into an elevator Saturday night and leave the hotel before heading southbound on Las Vegas Boulevard. They checked Martel's phone and saw he got a text message from Christopher Saturday morning asking where the $20 gaming voucher was. There was also a 23-minute phone call between Martel and his girlfriend that evening, corroborating their girlfriend's story. Police also showed the woman a photo of Christopher and she identified him as a person she knew as Queez. On Monday the 12th of June, the criminal apprehension team located Christopher about 10 miles away, 
in the 6800 block of West Cheyenne Avenue and arrested him without incident. He's charged with an open count of murder and he's held at the Clark County Detention Center without bond. A 27-year-old woman is behind bars for fatally stabbing a 27-year-old boyfriend after he accused her of cheating on him. At 6.31pm on Saturday the 10th of June, authorities responded to the 900 block of Walnut Street in Racine, Wisconsin, on reports of a stabbing. When officers arrived, they found an unresponsive man laying on the sidewalk bleeding from his chest. The victim's girlfriend, Adela Gomez Zuniga, was laying beside him, crying with blood on her shirt. She told officers, I stabbed him. Medics attempted life-saving measures and transported the man to a nearby hospital, where he was declared dead. Authorities said that Adele and the victim, who was not identified, started fighting after drinking alcohol, even though he had been sober for a year. The victim allegedly blocked her from entering their house and accused her of cheating on him. After Adela finally got into the home, they continued arguing about her alleged infidelity, as well as who paid the bills. They were pushing and punching each other, and he pushed her into a kitchen table. The victim went down to the basement and took $400 they had put away to save. After returning back, Adela grabbed a knife from the sink. Her boyfriend began taunting her, saying that she was stupid and that she wouldn't stab him. Adela told police that she didn't take her pills that day and had also been drinking, and that she stabbed her boyfriend in the chest. Authorities said that the victim ran out the back door screaming for help, and Adela followed him to get the money back. Neighbors said Adele and the victim had been arguing loudly for 15 to 20 minutes inside the home before they saw the victim collapse outside the residence. Adela was arrested and while in the back of the police car, she said I stabbed him because he tried to take my money and he tried to kill me. During a search of the home, police found a 10 inch butcher knife with blood on it, as well as blood in several areas of the home. While in jail, she was heard saying I hope he dies. She later told officers, I can't believe he's dead and that was never her intention. When asked what her intention was, she said I wanted to get him scared. Adela is charged with first degree intentional homicide and use of a dangerous weapon. She's held at the Racine County Jail and a bond has been set at $500,000. She's scheduled to appear in court on the 21st of June for a preliminary hearing. If convicted, she faces up to life in prison. A 37 year old man is behind bars for fatally shooting his father. At around 1am on Wednesday the 14th of June, authorities responded to a residence in Woolburg, North Carolina, on reports of a shooting. When officers arrived, they went inside the home and found Jamie Allen Coe deceased from gunshot wounds. During the investigation, detectives determined that Jamie had been shot by his son, Justin Allen Coe. Justin was arrested and charged with murder. He's held at the Davison County Jail without bond. He's scheduled to appear in the Davidson County District Court on the 12th of July. No other information about the shooting or what may have led to it was released. A young woman has been arrested and charged after she battered police officers. At around 9.45pm on the 8th of June, authorities responded to a home on North 8th Street in Middletown, Indiana on report of a person refusing to leave a home. When one officer arrived, he could hear several people yelling on the porch outside. He described several cigarettes and other things scattered about. Investigators said that a woman identified as T Short was holding a small child and crying. T said she called 911 because her daughter, Emily Collins, came to visit and was refusing to leave. She added that early in the week, there was an altercation and Emily had battered her. She said she was tired of being treated badly by her daughter. The officer then asked Emily to leave the home and warned her that she would be arrested if she did not comply. Emily stated that she wasn't going to leave. After multiple attempts for a peaceful exit, the officer began to arrest Emily. She then began assaulting the police officer by punching and kicking. The officer was kicked in the groin, prompting Emily's father Bobby to help try and restrain the woman. The officer then called for backup, and another officer responded to the scene. Both officers then attempted to put handcuffs on Emily's wrists. She freed herself and began swinging, striking the officer in the face and kicking a second officer in the chest. The officers then held Emily down on the ground until additional backup arrived. Three additional officers arrived and they were able to restrain Emily with handcuffs. They went to place her in a squad car and after placing a seatbelt around her she refused to put her feet in the car and demanded to be let loose stating she would not go to jail. After being warned of getting tased by officers, Emily complied with their demand. Her mother informed officers she had asthma 
and was afraid Emily would have an attack after the altercation. Police took Emily to a local hospital for clearance for the condition. After being granted medical clearance, she was taken to the Henry County Jail. Emily is charged with two counts of battery against a public official, resisting law enforcement and criminal trespassing. Authorities are investigating a shooting which took the life of a pregnant 21-year-old woman and an unborn child. At around 1am on Sunday the 11th of June, a fight broke out at Soup's Restaurant and Bar at 1205 Country Club Drive in Jackson, Mississippi. A Yara Anderson was eight months pregnant and had spent the night at the venue, and as she was attempting to leave in her car, she got caught in a crossfire. She was shot in the head and leg and crashed the vehicle into the Interstate 220 overpass along Industrial Drive. A Yari's friends attempted to revive her and called 911. Paramedics arrived and transported her to a local hospital where she was placed on life support. An emergency C-section was performed, but Ayari and the unborn child died. Police have not made any arrests to date and have urged anyone with information about the incident to contact Crime Stoppers. A 42-year-old man is behind bars in connection to the homicide of his 48-year-old girlfriend. At 11.23pm on Friday the 9th of June, authorities responded to a home along the 2340 block of Berg Road in Detroit, Michigan after Stacy Smith was found deceased in a bedroom. Authorities said she had been fatally strangled, stabbed in the chest with a knife, and her left leg had been partially burned. Upon further investigation, detectives identified Stacy's boyfriend Cortez Xavier Coleman as a suspect in a murder. Authorities said they believe Cortez tried to cover up the crime by burning Stacy's body with lighter fluid before fleeing the scene. On Monday the 12th of June, police located Cortez and he was arrested. On Thursday the 15th of June, Cortez was arraigned in court via Zoom on a first degree murder charge. He pleaded not guilty to the charge and he's been held without bond. His preliminary hearing is scheduled for the 12th of July. Stacy survived by two teenage children, Kaya and Keith. The motive in the attack is unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. A 61-year-old man is behind bars for fatally beating his 69-year-old roommate. At 8.45pm on Friday the 2nd of June, authorities responded to Heritage Place Adult Living Centre at 1372 Eufaula Road in Statesville, North Carolina, after facility employees called 911 to report an assault. When deputies arrived, they found 69-year-old Mark Gray Leggett conscious, but suffering from significant trauma after being beaten in the head repeatedly with a blunt object. Paramedics rushed Mark to the Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center for emergency medical care. Investigators interviewed witnesses at the scene and recovered evidence. The victim's roommate, Gregory Gerald Warner, who was still on scene, was identified as a suspect and was immediately taken into custody. Gregory was transported to the Iredale County Detention Center and was charged with felony assault inflicting serious bodily injury. A week later on Friday the 9th of June, authorities learnt that Mark died while at the hospital. On Monday the 12th of June, an autopsy was conducted by the medical examiner and it was determined that Mark's death was caused by injuries received during the assault. That same day, Gregory's assault charge was upgraded to first degree murder and he remains in jail without bond. Gregory has a criminal history and has previously been convicted for indecent exposure. The motive in the attack is unclear, as the investigation into the matter continues. A 61-year-old man is behind bars after he's found living with the body of his roommate for several days. On Friday the 9th of June, authorities responded to a residence at 4th Avenue West in Sipsy, Alabama about a dead family member inside the home. When deputies arrived, they found Lee Andrew Smith Jr. living inside the home with the man's body for days, without notifying authorities of his death. The deceased man has been identified as James Edward Royal. James's 17-year-old grandson made the discovery and reported it to authorities. Lee Andrew was arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse. He remains held at the Walker County Jail on a $10,000 cash-only bond. 45-year-old Robert Morarity is accused of killing his wife, 42-year-old Kimberly Callum and their 11-year-old daughter, and hiding their bodies in a garage for months at an abandoned rural residence. At 8.30am on Monday the 12th of June, Kimberly's brother-in-law called the Wise County Sheriff's Office and said that no one had seen her or her child for months. He told the 911 operator his sister-in-law was living off of County Road 4371 with Robert in Decatur, Texas. He also said the couple had three children. 
Deputies went to their home, finding it abandoned. No one answered when they knocked on the door, and a walk around the property found no one at the address. The next day, at around 6pm, a sheriff's office investigator, the Texas Rangers and several Dallas police officers located Robert in Dallas, more than an hour away from the Decatur property. They questioned him while his two children, aged 10 and 3, were beside him. Investigators said at first, Robert said he hadn't seen Kimberly or their daughter for about six months. Eventually, though, he told the investigators that they were dead, and their remains were in the garage of the home deputies originally checked out. The children were released to Child Protective Services, and Robert voluntarily returned to Wise County with a Wise County Sheriff's Office investigator and a Texas Ranger. They went to the home, where he pointed out where the bodies were. Sheriff Lanekin said the bodies were covered and stowed away in the garage, and it wasn't hard to find them. He said they were covered with blankets and clothing, and had been stowed away in the garage for quite some time, probably five to six months. We don't know exactly what the motive was, or exactly how they were killed, but we know it was at his hand, he said. Detectives located two knives at the scene. Robert was arrested and charged with tampering with a corpse, murder and capital murder. He's out at the Wise County Jail on a $800,000 bond. The bodies of both victims were sent to the Dallas Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy. The investigation into the matter continues. Thirty-two-year-old Chad Dolman is behind bars after he admitted to fatally shooting his three young sons with a rifle at their home and injuring his wife. At around 4.15pm on Thursday the 15th of June, Authorities responded to a property along the 1900 block of Laurel Lindell Road in a rural wooded area of Monroe Township, Ohio, after receiving two 911 calls. The first call came from the mother who was screaming her babies had been shot. The second call came three minutes later by a passing motorist who said a little girl was running down the street saying that her father was killing everyone. Responding deputies arrived at the scene and found three unresponsive boys in the front yard with gunshot wounds. They attempted life-saving measures until medics arrived, but the boys died at the scene. The boy's mother, a 34-year-old woman, was also outside the home when deputies arrived, suffering from a gunshot wound to her hand after having grabbed Chad's gun at some point in an attempt to save her children. She was transported to hospital and was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Chad was found sitting on a step outside the residence. He was taken into custody without incident and interviewed by detectives. Investigators learnt that Chad had planned the killings and he admitted to lining the boys up at his property and shooting them execution style. During this time, one of the boys had tried to flee to a nearby field and was hunted down by his father before being hauled back to the home and then shot dead. The motive in the slayings is unclear. Chad was charged with three counts of aggravated murder and is transported to the Clermont County Jail. On Friday the 16th of June, he appeared at the Clermont County Court in tears where a judge said his bond at $20 million. Authorities said that Chad may face additional charges. The investigation into the matter continues. A 24-year-old Florida woman is facing a murder charge in the death of her two-year-old son after she confined the boy to a table booster seat for about 15 hours and neglected him. Rebecca Gussage Johnson was initially arrested in May on charges of aggravated child abuse, resulting in great bodily harm and child neglect in connection to the case. On Friday the 16th of June, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office announced that she's now facing an additional charge of first-degree murder while engaged in child abuse. The new charge was added on Thursday after the medical examiner's office concluded that the child's death was a homicide caused by severe neglect. At around 8pm on Friday the 19th of May, deputies were called to a mobile RV on a commercial property along the 10,000 block of US Highway 301 in Tampa, Florida, after the boy's aunt found the child unresponsive. The boy was found in a bassinet underneath a blanket. The boy's aunt was asked to check on the child by the two-year-old's father. While speaking with police, Rebecca admitted to strapping the boy into a table booster seat as punishment for acting out and screaming at around 8pm the previous night. Investigators said that the two-year-old was confined to the booster seat for about 15 hours and he became unresponsive around 2pm on the 19th of May. The boy was asleep in the booster seat, sitting up right around midnight when Rebecca last saw the boy. At around 11am, Rebecca found the boy laying on his side still restrained in the seat. The seat was flipped over and no longer upright. Rebecca said she saw the boy having seizures and shake uncontrollably. She picked the boy up and he died in her arms. Despite having a working phone, Rebecca did not call 911 throughout the day. Investigators found injuries on several parts of the child's body. The boy had trauma to his head, a wound to his right thigh and bruising on his extremities. He was covered in vomit and feces when he was found. The boy's father told police he purchased the RV about a year ago 
and said Rebecca and the two-year-old boy and their eight-month-old daughter lived in the home. Their father did not live in the home and had not seen the boy for six to seven months before the incident. He told police that Rebecca always kept the children locked in the mobile RV. Rebecca's been held without bail at the Falkenberg Road Jail. The baby girl is reportedly in the care of her grandfather. Thirty-year-old Cordell Gooseby is behind bars after opening fire on a car, killing a pregnant woman and an unborn child and injuring her husband. And just after 11am on Tuesday the 13th of June, authorities responded to several calls of shots fired at an occupied white Tesla at the intersection of 4th Avenue and Lenora Street in Seattle, Washington. When officers arrived, they rendered aid to the two adult victims suffering from gunshot wounds until medics arrived. The female victim was identified as 34-year-old Ina Kwan, who was 32 weeks pregnant. She was shot four times. Her 37-year-old husband, Evan Kwan, had also been struck, but sustained non-life-threatening injuries. They were rushed to the Harborview Medical Center, where Ina died. Her child briefly survived, but died as well. Surveillance footage from a nearby building showed Cordell running up to the driver's side door of the victim with an arm extended. Several witnesses identified Cordell as a suspect, and police spotted him nearby and as he was taken into custody, he allegedly said, I did it. I did it. The couple were reportedly on their way to work when the shooting occurred. While Cordell was interviewed by police, he said he thought he saw a gun in the car, so he responded by firing into the vehicle. He told officers that he has a history of needing mental health care, and responding detectives noted that he appeared to be in some sort of crisis when he was arrested. Cordell's a convicted felon, and is unable to possess a weapon. Police said that the handgun used in the shooting of the couple was stolen out of Lakewood. Cordell is charged with first-degree murder and first-degree attempted murder. He may also be charged in the death of an unborn child, as well as illegally possessing a firearm. He's held on the $10 million bond. 4 people were dead in Breathitt County, Kentucky after a woman shot 3 relatives, then turned the gun on herself. 34-year-old Ashley Little shot her 15-year-old daughter Chloe Little, grandmother 78-year-old Missouri Gross, and another relative 58-year-old Luther Combs at Ashley's residence at 2975 Wolverine Road in Jackson, Kentucky. State police were called to the scene at 10.37am on Friday the 16th of June after another family member went to the residence and found an unresponsive female. The Breathitt County Coroner pronounced the four people dead at the scene. Investigators said that Ashley and Chloe lived in a mobile home, while Missouri lived in an apartment over an attached garage at the same address. Police are still investigating what led up to the shooting. A 26-year-old man is behind bars after fatally shooting his 20-year-old girlfriend at their home. At around 1am on Friday the 16th of June, Authorities responded to the 9,000 block of North Parkview Drive in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a deceased woman lying in the driveway of the property who was identified as 20-year-old Akaya Dorsey. Police said that Khalil Holmes, who was a suspect of the shooting, remained at scene and was arrested. Investigators confirmed that Khalil and Akaya were in a relationship, however it's unclear what events led up to the shooting. Khalil is charged with negligent homicide and is held at the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison with no bond set. The investigation into the matter continues. 35-year-old Marissa Rodriguez has been charged this week with murdering 66-year-old Michael Massena. On the 12th of April, authorities went to Michael's home at 7017 Crestview Drive in Erie, Pennsylvania to complete a welfare check on him after family members reported they hadn't heard from him since the 28th of March. When officers arrived at the residence, they observed nonsensical graffiti on the walls, but no one answered when they knocked on the door, and no one was found inside the home when they went in. Investigators were called back to the residence on the 13th of April to investigate a report of a woman in the attic and encountered Marissa, who said she was there to take care of Michael's cats and had not seen Michael in weeks. Michael's Cadillac was at the residence when detectives arrived, but when they returned to the residence later in the day to complete a missing persons report with members of Michael's family, the car was gone. Police issued a be on a lookout alert for the vehicle. While going through the residence during that second visit, investigators noticed a portion of carpet and padding missing from the front entry of the home. Detectives also found bleach and bleach wipes and blood on a bathroom wall. Human tissue was found in a floor vent, and blood splatter was observed on the floor and ceiling. Investigators took a closer look at the graffiti on the walls, which contained statements including, I already shot myself six times in the head, and shot the devil and burn him alive. 
Officers found a burn pit behind the garage of the property that was warm and contained human tissue and bones, as well as fibres that appeared to be the same as a missing carpet from the home. On the evening of the 13th of April, Marissa was found in Lilydale, New York, driving Michael's vehicle. She was arrested for the stolen vehicle and was taken into custody at the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office and extradited back to Pennsylvania. She was booked into the Erie County Prison without bond and was charged with unauthorized use of the motor vehicle. While interviewed by detectives, Marissa said she lived with Michael for two to three months at Crestview Drive, but last from about two weeks earlier. She also made several comments about Michael being dead, but did not disclose how she knew he was dead. Investigators searched Michael's bank records as part of the investigation. Purchases made through the account included washcloths, a gas can purchased by Marissa on the 29th of March, and a chainsaw purchased by her on the 3rd of April. Detectives reviewed video footage of her making these purchases using Michael's debit card and PIN. Detectives also found an iCloud account belonging to Marissa. It contained a photo of a gun and a video of Michael deceased with gunshot wounds to the back of his head and to his body, lying on the floor in a pool of blood at the front of the home. An examination of a Google account associated with Marissa revealed searches made on how to shoot someone, how long it takes to burn a body, and cutting a dead body with a chainsaw. On Tuesday the 13th of June, Marissa was charged with criminal homicide, aggravated assault, abuse of a corpse, access device fraud, theft by unlawful taking, identity theft, tampering with or fabricating evidence, and possession of a firearm prohibited. The investigation into the matter continues. A 33-year-old woman was fatally shot in a backyard during an argument. At around 5.50pm on Friday the 16th of June, authorities responded to a property in the 1400 block of Ridgewood Avenue in Lakewood, Ohio, and reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a woman with a gunshot wound to the chest in the backyard of a house. The woman was transported to the Metro Health Medical Center, where she was pronounced dead. The Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office identified the victim as Anika Coleman. According to authorities, they took three people to police headquarters for questioning. Witnesses at the scene told police that the victim had been arguing with residents of the home when shots were fired. Two guns were recovered at the scene. Investigators are working to determine what the argument was about, as well as who fired the gunshots. The people who were questioned were released, and no charges are pending at this time, as investigation into the matter continues. A 26-year-old man is behind bars for fatally shooting a 23-year-old woman over the weekend. At 12.39am on Saturday the 17th of June, authorities responded to the 100 block of Boulder Drive in Franklin, Ohio, where they found a woman with multiple gunshot wounds. First responders attempted life-saving measures, but were unsuccessful, and she was pronounced dead at the scene. The victim was identified as Caitlin Puckett of Lebanon, Ohio. During the investigation, authorities identified Elijah Thomas as a suspect, who fled the scene on foot after fatally striking the victim. At 9.42am that same morning, police located Elijah driving in the city of Franklin. Authorities performed a traffic stop and arrested him without incident. Police said that Elijah is from Hamilton, Ohio, and has ties to the Lebanon, Ohio area as well, but did not disclose what those ties were. Elijah is charged with murder and felonious assault, and is held at the Warren County Jail on a $100,000 bond. He is set to appear in court on the 20th of June. The motive in the attack is unclear, as the investigation into the matter continues. A pregnant woman and her unborn child have died after she was shot by a two-year-old son. At around 1.30pm on Friday the 16th of June, authorities responded to a home along Woodlawn Avenue in Norwick, Ohio, after 31-year-old Laura Eild called 911 to report that she had been shot. When police arrived at the residence, they found Laura behind a locked door upstairs with a gunshot wound to her back. Laura and her unborn child were pronounced dead shortly thereafter. Police said that Laura and her toddler son were the only ones at the home at the time. Norwick Police Chief Dave Smith said there's just no words. The specifics on how the shooting happened is yet to be determined. The detectives are taking a good look at it, he said. 26-year-old Donovan Hartzell is behind bars after a security home camera caught him shaking and hurting his four-month-old infant daughter over the weekend. At around 10.35am on Saturday the 17th of June, authorities responded to a home in Safety Harbor, Florida, after receiving a report of child abuse. The baby's mother, who was not home at the time when deputies arrived, told them that Donovan was seen on a camera inside the home shaking and hurting the baby. When law enforcement went inside the home, 
They found Donovan in a bedroom and the baby lying on the bed crying. Authorities said the infant had visible red marks on her face, neck, arms and chest. Authorities said that a video provided by the mother confirmed that Donovan held the baby by her shoulders and shook her vigorously back and forth. Donovan then put the baby on his lap while she continues to cry, and then he starts to aggressively rub a blanket in her face. A child was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Donovan was arrested and charged with child abuse, and remains held at the Pinellas County Jail. The investigation into the matter continues. 33-year-old Brittany Holbrook is behind bars after fatally shooting a 30-year-old boyfriend, Tyler Nulich. At 2.45am on Saturday the 17th of June, authorities responded to a house at 491 Avenue F in Big Copper Key, Florida after the couple's roommate Jordan King called 911. He told the operator's roommate Tyler was in bad shape and is hurt really bad and there's a lot of blood. When deputies arrived, they found Tyler on the living room floor covered in blood with a bullet wound to his lower back. Deputies saw a handgun along with a spent shell casing on the floor. Tyler was unconscious but breathing, and he was rushed to the Lower Keys Medical Center, but he died an hour later. Jordan told investigators that he, Tyler, and Tyler's girlfriend, Brittany, had been drinking earlier, and that all three went to bed before he was awakened by a scream. He ran to the living room and found Tyler on the floor bleeding. When he asked what happened, Tyler reportedly said the bitch shot me in the back. When deputies questioned Brittany, she said she initially said there was a gap in her memory. She said she remembered going to bed. The next thing she recalled was being in the living room holding her boyfriend, who was covered in blood. A little later, she said she recalled waking up in the bed and Tyler strangling her. She said she didn't know how she got away, but remembered him strangling her a second time and pushing her up against the bathroom wall. She told detectives that while Tyler was strangling her, she struggled to breathe so she punched and scratched him. While detectives saw bruising on her knuckles, they did not see any sign of strangulation on her throat or in her eyes. She said that she had not fired a gun since moving from Stewart, Florida over nine months ago. Brittany was arrested and charged with murder. She remains held at the Monroe County Jail. A woman was arrested after she went for an early Sunday morning stroll naked. At 6.36am on the 18th of June, authorities responded to the 700 block of Keck Avenue in Evansville, Indiana, on reports of a female walking the streets without any clothes on. Police quickly located the woman later identified as Roxby Babb, down the road at the intersection of Morton and Race Avenue. Roxy was handcuffed and transported to the Vanderburgh County Confinement Centre and is charged with public indecency. A man has been arrested after a mother of a toddler found a stranger sexually assaulting a baby in an upstairs bedroom. At 12.40am on Friday the 16th of June, authorities responded to a woman's home at Pico, Ohio, after she called police to report the abuse, the man fled the residence after being discovered. Police developed a suspect, and by 12.30pm that day, they arrested 34-year-old Jesse Hartman of Piqua. Jesse was charged with rape and burglary, and he's been held at the Miami County Jail. Police said additional charges could be filed. The investigation into the matter continues. A 44-year-old woman is behind bars after impersonating a child protective services worker and trying to lure a four-year-old boy to her home. At just after 3 p.m. on Saturday the 17th of June, Lisa Nocrelli knocked on the door of the victim's home, located at 5801 Ralston Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio, and claimed she worked for child protective services. Lisa, who was wearing a badge, asked to enter the victim's home to perform an inspection because someone had filed a complaint against them. The child's mother, Jamie Spreadland, said that Lisa even knew all of her children's names. Lisa, however, did not leave her contact information behind. Jamie said she was tending to her infant son inside the home, and her daughter was in the driveway, while her son was out the front on his bike when he was approached by Lisa. Her husband, Tim, was away at the time. The victim's parents felt something was off, and reviewed surveillance footage and saw that Lisa touched their son, put her arm around him, and stroked his hair for several minutes before she spoke with the mother. The family did some research and learnt that Lisa was not in fact with Child Protective Services. Jamie said that everything was a lie, and now we're sitting here on top of being enraged that this has even happened, terrified because I don't know what her plan was. Lisa told investigators that she had been drinking since early that day, and that she walked to Kroger to get some more beer. She said that on the walk home, I saw a young child that I felt wasn't being supervised, so in an attempt to scare the parent, I pretended to be from Child Protective Services, she said. Lisa, who lives several blocks away, allegedly asked the boy to come with her to her home three different times before he rushed inside to alert his mother. Norwood police officers arrested Lisa 
and booked her into the Hamilton County Jail on a charge of criminal child enticement. On the 20th of June, police filed additional charges of burglary and impersonating an officer. She remains held on a $10,000 bond. On the 15th of June, a jury found 19-year-old Megan Joyce Amirowitz guilty of killing her 64-year-old father. On the morning of the 1st of October 2021, Megan threw drain cleaner on her father Conrad Amirowitz, who slept on a couch in the home along Duck Creek Lane in Groveland Township, Michigan, leaving him unconscious and with burns all over his body. Authorities said that Conrad struggled with alcohol, and he was drunk at the time with a blood alcohol level of 0.3. Megan was upset he was unable to drive her to the hair salon for an appointment before her 18th birthday party later that night, after turning 18 two days earlier. Megan texted her friend Kayla at around 10am and sent her a picture of herself crying. When Kayla asked what was wrong, she said my dad got drunk and I freaked out and threw stuff at him. Megan then left the house, leaving her father alone. Kayla received another text from Megan at 3.47pm that afternoon and asked if she could go to her house to check on her dad because he was sleeping and she needed the credit card number. Since she just lived down the road, she agreed. When Kayla arrived at the residence, she discovered Conrad unconscious with significant burns all over his body and immediately contacted 911. While her father was being treated for chemical burns to his head, torso and extremities at the Genesis Hospital in Grand Blanche, Megan called Kayla two times requesting the credit card number. When Kayla told Megan her father was in hospital, Megan hung up the phone. When police went to the house to investigate the matter, they found lye powder on the couch where Conrad had been laying. At around midnight, Megan was arrested by Michigan State Police at a hotel where she was celebrating her birthday. In an interview with police, Megan claimed that she had thrown a bag of bread at her father and possibly water, which were near some cleaning products. Conrad remained hospitalized for five months following the attack. He underwent numerous skin grafts and endured infections that led to the amputation of both his legs. He died on the 6th of March 2022 after being taken off life support. The Oakland County Prosecutor's Office said that he died from chemical burns and complications sustained after a chemical was thrown on him. Prosecutor Karen McDonald said this is a tragic case. The defendant lashed out in anger and wound up killing her father. Megan faces up to life in prison and will be sentenced on the 25th of July. A man and a woman are dead following a shooting in a suspected murder-suicide. At 6.47pm on Sunday the 18th of June, authorities responded to a home at 2942 First Avenue in New Auburn, Wisconsin, after receiving a report that two people were possibly dead. When deputies arrived at the scene, they found 37-year-old Beth Parker, the resident of the home, suffering from a gunshot wound. She was rushed to a local hospital, where she died from her injuries. Investigators said that 38-year-old Jeremy Whitrock of Rice Lake, who was under a no-contact order with Beth due to a pending domestic abuse charge, was pronounced dead at the scene with what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A 15-year-old was also at the home at the time, but was not physically hurt. The teen's relationship to the man and woman is unknown. Authorities said the official causes of death will be released by the Barron County Medical Examiner's Office at a later date.